What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Sport Champs, Street Champs' most exclusive and only sports podcast on the whole damn channel. What is up? My name is Rick G. Your guys' is hope. To, uh, hope. Your hope? The hope. I'm the hope of the goddamn damn. The whole podcast, huh? <laughs> your host. Damn, I fucked that up, huh? Your host, your co-host, Dave, right here to my right. What's good? And the man behind the cam, Mr. Winston. Sir. What up, dudes? What well, let's good? just honestly, I should just play this other soundbite right away. So we're starting. <laughs> oh, oh, wrong one. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that was for still spicy. So. Okay, I was like, I thought what you were about to drop that. <laughs> that was, that that was definitely that was <laughs> definitely for still spicy. Derek didn't like it though, so it's not ever gonna. <laughs> 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 but let's talk MMA, huh? Now it's time to talk MMA. Let's just start with that, y'all, because. I don't know. I mean, well, I guess I should have asked how, how everybody's weeks was. I'll play this again. How was everybody's week? You didn't win another tournament, Winston? I didn't, no. You no, lost the tournament, didn't you? Um, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Did you oh. get your winnings yet? I have not picked it up yet. Brother. <laughs> I mean, when you, win Why so not? Many, when you win so many tournaments, bro, it's just like, you know, I got... This dude's so rich, no, he I'm doesn't need to pick up his winnings. So uh, it's it's only... You can only use it in the pro shop, so it's like a gift card. What? Yeah. Bruh. Wait, yeah. you didn't tell us that last oh, week. I'm going to buy some cool merch. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna buy <laughs> this some guy's going to buy a polo and some I'm fucking buy golf tees. Cool ass hat. Fucking. How much do you polo. think it is? Like at least 150 probably. Get some of those custom like Jordan cleats or the. um. No. They don't... My, my girlfriend just bought me new golf shoes. For winning. Oh, Remember yeah. last week? Yeah. Well, Dave doesn't listen. Clearly. Dave's the worst listener. Yeah. It's Write okay. that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was your week, Mr. Bad Listener? Um. Other than like the whole, <laughs> oop, 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 oop. other than Sorry. the whole uh, <laughs> like tax reimbursement thing going oh, yeah. through, which made work a little hectic, but dope. Um, other than <laughs> that, uh, it was great. Honestly, just hmm. watched a bunch of stuff on Netflix. You know, damn, nothing to report on. <laughs> that was a damn <laughs> very interesting. You know, <laughs> my weeks are random. <laughs> Same though. Like I've just been super busy this week. Uh, I almost missed this podcast. Oh, I was talking to him about it because, and I didn't want to like put it in our sport champs chat because I didn't know what was happening for sure. My boss is kind of last minute, but I'm I'm setting up a music video with my boss. Um, he's gonna be getting his sick ass cars, all his homie cars uh, out, and we were gonna go scope the location today. We're gonna do it tomorrow instead because uh, he was out of town and nice. he just got back into town last night. So I was like, bro, like take a day, like <laughs> you don't have to, because he drove from he drove co- cross country. So, yesterday he was in Kansas City. Fucking shout out Casey. Yes, sir. But, you already see me. Yeah. He was in Kansas City yesterday, but... Yeah. No, nothing crazy. I woke up this morning a little snuffly, dude. Do you guys kind of hear it in the mic? I don't think so. No? Do I sound good? Maybe yeah. it's just myself then. I think then. Zizi just I, chimed in. She said, yeah. I've noticed, like, <laughs> opening, like, sleeping with the window open. Yeah. That'll that's, do it. That's it's, what did it, dude. Allergies definitely ramped up this week. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. Annoying. Uh, but what else is ramping up that week? Sports is coming back, dude. Football's. I, oh yeah. I mean, we're in the preseason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Full swing. Um, I just started my family uh, fantasy football league. Our draft's gonna be next Saturday at 10 a.m. Nice. So we should fucking set up ours, dude. We yeah. should like. We just gotta get figure out who. Yeah, we gotta get people to commit. So what I'll do is I'm gonna make the league today, and we'll start sending invites. ESPN tonight. league, right? Like I'll send. Yeah, ESPN. Good. I'll send it to you. You. Derek's not going to want to be in it. He's going to lose. So it's just a bragging rights league anyway. It is yeah, just a bragging no rights. Yeah, involved. there's no money involved. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get that started. If you guys want to be in the Sport Champs uh, Fantasy League, hit us up because I'm trying to get a 12 man PPR league. Like I, that's what I want ideally. That'd be dope. I'm trying Minimum to keep of like all eight, eight, ideally ten to twelve. Yeah, I would. I like to do twelve because it's such a deep. It's so deep. I've like, never you're done. You're just 12. like, oh fuck! Like it's so fun, bro. I've only done tens. It's so fun because then like a lot of trades can happen. Like it's just yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. But yeah, that's coming up. Uh, baseball's gonna be starting. Basketball's gonna be starting. Right? Baseball's already been going. Yeah, baseball's, baseball's full, been full swing. Yeah. Damn. When did that start then? Five minutes ago. It, it like ends in October. So Their season's long as shit. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't watch baseball. Starting. Yeah, I don't fuck with baseball either. 
Mm. Baseball is it's fun live. Boring. It's, it's really boring. Fun to, live. It's fun to go to. Yeah, but, but yeah, but you're drinking the whole time. That's, that's exactly the whole point. It it's the party. You're not the there to watch the game. Exactly. But when you're at a football or basketball game, you're there to watch the game. Yeah, yeah that shit's like completely. You're engulfed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. MMA too, like that too. Same. As soon as you're there, you're just like engulfed. you feel like you're like uh, one of the training partners of the fighters. You go, you grow so attached to them in the moment, just like your team. I remember my lady went to a baseball game recently. It was like the, they're not called the White Sox anymore, but the fucking Rocky Mountain. No, no, our fucking, what are they called now? The AAA team? Yeah, the fuck, the, they're, they're like fucking s'mores now or something. What are they? I have no idea. It's like, I know they changed their about, name. The, not the Sky Sox, the, um, uh, the fuck are they called now? I don't know. Damn. I thought Winston would know. Uh, it's okay. Baseball. But anyway, yeah. she went to the game, and she, I was like, yo, so who won? She's like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. I'm like, oh. She's like, yeah, we just went and got hammered. Like, <laughs> that's what it... That's I was the like, vibes. oh, that's baseball. Yeah, so, fuck baseball. Um, football's starting up, though, so get ready for fantasy. Oh, yeah. Get ready, get ready. And basketball. Do we have any basketball news coming up later? Not really. Not really. KD's wants to... The KD wants thing. Wants to move on. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, really, huh? Yeah, pretty much. We don't have too much for football news either. We don't have too much news oriented stuff, so we're probably just going to be breaking down a lot of like stuff today, guys. Um, so you know, speaking of that, let me hit this again. Now it's time to talk MMA. Now that we got over our week and all the other bullshit we were talking about, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hit that one premature. Let's go over these last fights that happened this last week. So we had, uh, we had um, fuck. great card. Yeah, it was a it was a fight night, right? It was, yeah. was it in the Apex? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, it was in the Apex, huh? Yeah, it was Tiago Silva. Santos. Or Santos. Santos, yeah. yeah. Silva's a different fighter, but Tiago Santos versus um, Hill. Jamal Hill. Yeah. I watched Mr. Apex. the whole card, I think. Let me see what these prelims were looking like. Yeah, I did. What? Yeah. Okay, so yes, dude. This was crazy. It feels like, I don't know why this card feels like it was so much longer than it was ago. Like, it doesn't feel like last week. It feels like the week before. Just done a lot. <laughs> yeah, right? Been busy. Been mad busy. So let's go over these um, prelim fights a little bit. Josh Quinlan was supposed to uh, fight Jason Witt on this card. They actually moved it to this weekend's card. Um, but we started it out with uh, Myra Bueno Silva getting it done against Stephanie Ager via submission. Mm-hmm. First round in the first minute, 17 seconds. Um, I honestly, I expected a finish on this one. I didn't expect finishes for the whole card though yeah if you bet for every fight to go the distance i think you would have had like a plus plus three hundred ninety thousand or something i forgot what I've, I've seen it on twitter like one of my betting guys that i follow <clears throat> shout out connor burks he um uh, he posted some crazy thing if you put everybody to win by knock uh, by how they won and you parlayed it up you would have won like thirty thousand dollars on one dollar jesus uh, christ like, yeah, it was like it was fucking. It was the breakdown he posted was crazy, but yeah. That being said, all finishes for this last card, which that that I think this is the tenth time in UFC history it's ever happened. It was lovely. Out of two hundred and something cards, it's mm-hmm. crazy. It's only happened ten times. We've had to finish every single fight. Um, like I said, the first one, Bueno Silva getting the submission done in the first round against Stephanie Ager. Corey McKenna getting the submission done. Second round against Miranda Granger. And I, I do want to state, Corey McKenna just kind of put it on her the whole fight. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Granger couldn't get shit done. McKenna was just so much stronger. And let's just kind of move on to the next fight after that because it was just so dominant. Like, Corey oh, McKenna my. made her her bitch. And <clears throat> ta- speaking about someone making them their bitch, Brian Battle took out Takashi Sato in um, 44 seconds, under a minute. So, for those who didn't... Oh, my t- God. For those who didn't tune into that fight, I'm mm. assuming you, you might see not have fight? seen it, Winston. I did not. Uh, so, <clears throat> Brian Battle... I'll show you. He won, you the most, talking. he won the most recent Ultimate Fighter series, and this was the, the newest season of the Ultimate Fighter finale. So, this was kind of a his first fight since then. I think he might have actually had one fight since then in between, but anyway. Um, so, Brian Battle, the like sampling that we've seen of him... We've seen a lot of grappling. He's look, he's shown a lot of striking potential. And if I'm not mistaken, he won the Ultimate Fighter at 185, and this fight was at 170, so he's been losing weight. Um, for a large portion of this fight that lasted less than one minute, he was kind of he threw the head kick a few times. <clears throat> he was kind of sampling with it. He was trying to see what his head movement would be. Damn. And then he threw like a straight jab, followed by the head kick immediately. 
and then comatosed him. Like as soon as Soto hit yeah. the ground, his arms were locked. Yeah, I saw that. That's that crazy. was so. And I had to show. I, that I one. didn't know that Battle had that in him. And it's not to say that I didn't think he was capable of kicking someone that hard and getting a knockout in that fashion. It's just like me personally. That's such an athletically demanding strike that <clears throat> it's hard to just assume anyone can do that. But to be fair, they're all professional. So but, I, I agree oh. with you wholeheartedly because. I thought he was going to win. I had money on him. I had him Not parlayed like up. That. I had him parlayed up, and I didn't think he was going to do that. I was like, Mwah. he was an underdog, too, I think. Or no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was a big uh, favorite, actually. And then um, He was like a minus 295. I'm tripping. Yeah. But, um, That's tough. <laughs> that it's was, tough. It's tough. Now he's at 9-1. and one. That was performance of the night bonus. Went to Brian yep. Battle for that head kick. Uh, and then going on to the next one, that kind of makes me sad. Salm Alvi versus uh, Michael <sighs> Olesechik. And we kind of, I mean, we talked about it last mm-hmm. week. We, we said what was going to happen, and we, we called, called it. it. We called it. He's going to um, go for broke, and he's going to live with the results. <laughs> yeah, and he, <clears throat> he got interviewed by Ariel Hawani, and um, he knew he was going to fight out his contract. The UFC promised him to fight out his contract before his last fight. Mm-hmm. So they were like, um, we know you're on this winless streak. The well, I mean, nine, one of the biggest nine, streaks in UFC history. But you've been, they've that Sam Sam Alvey has been so loyal to the company that they were like, we want you to retire with us. Yeah, we want you to fight your last fight. We want you to like do it with us and then go out on you know your own terms and do it like that. So he was hyped with it, you know, and he wanted to do it. I think he kind of the way he was talking, it seemed like he knew he was going to go out there and get fucked up. But, I mean, he still tried his ass off. He went off. for broke. Like, he went for broke, yeah. Like You cannot hold it against him. That's the shit that Dana loves. That's the shit the fans love. Yeah, Sam Alvey went out on his shield. Dude has, a, like, hundreds of thousand followers on TikTok. I think he's going to be just fine. Did like, you? he's crazy. I believe in that same interview that he said that he, um, he almost broke Jake Paul's jaw when they sparred. Yeah. No, Logan's. Oh, Logan. Logan's. It was the, it was the, and oh. Jake, and after that, Jake didn't want to spar him. I wouldn't either. <laughs> the dude's yeah. got like a he's got a, like this a was faded, two years ago. He's too. got a faded smiley face on the back of his head, and he's got that like redheaded fury that you just have. You know yeah, what I'm bro. I loved watching Sam LV fight. I really fan did, dude. favorite. Retired at thirty three, eighteen, and one. So he put the gloves with one down. One no contest. He did not put the gloves down. I hope um, he does because they didn't. I mean, once you get a knock, I mean, he got knocked out like decisively. Like after that, like you're. They ship you out the cage the medics, so fast. Yeah. They don't, you know, they don't give you time. But yeah, it happened in the first round, one minute fifty six seconds. Uh, Sam Alley. I mean, we we knew what was going to happen. We knew what was going to happen. Um, I wish I put money on it, but I did it just because out of respect for the homeboy Sam Alvey. Moving on with these finishes, man. Like again, these this is crazy. Um, on the main card, Ariane Lipsky was supposed to fight. She's fighting this weekend instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're moving on to Terrence McKinney opening the card with a first round submission at two minutes and seventeen seconds. Again, this one of the, this card has been one of the craziest cards that I've seen in a long time. Um, finish every goddamn fight. Yeah. It was nice. It went fast. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it was cool. It was chaos. cool to see. Chaos. It was chaos. And it was one of those cards you don't expect that to happen. You know. But, I mean, once you have uh, Terrence McKinney fighting Eric Gonzalez, jumping on his back and choking him out, standing up, you kind of have a good idea what the rest of the main card's going to be like. And that's exactly what Terrence McKinney did. Hopped on his back, choked him the fuck out, had him parlayed up. Why wouldn't I? He was a, yeah. min- he was a minus 850. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't I parlay him up? That's the only way I'm going to be able to bet on him. So, he got the win. Another submission. There was a lot of submissions. A lot of submissions for the night. I thought that was really nice. Moving on after that, though, we got a heavyweight, Augusto Sakai, getting knocked out by Sergey Spivak. And it wasn't really a knock. It was a TKO. But, I mean, Spivak just was obviously the stronger man. Yep. Beat his ass the whole time. Mm-hmm. Took him down multiple times. Spivak just kind of put him wherever he wanted him. I mean, we we that was part of our parlay bet when we did it. We mm-hmm. parlayed up Spivak and Augusto Sakai to not go the distance. Yep. <clears throat> I definitely won that one with... Uh, we were getting close to the end of the second round, though. I was getting kind of scared. I was like, what are we doing? And then he took him down again, and it just started grounding pound. And I was like, oh, it's over. But um, after that, man, we're getting on to the tough winners, the tough finalists, dude. We had Brogan Walker versus Juliana Miller. This was a bad blood fight, yep. I would say. They did not like each other. We had a 4-0, four, uh, four and oh, or no, a 3-1 and one, Juliana Miller fighting a 8-2 and two Brogan Walker. Brogan Walker talking a lot of shit, was a bigger mouth, definitely in the tough house. Yep. Juliana shut her the fuck up and hit her with the DX chop. I do. Hit I, her with the I, DX chop. I was chop. waiting. I was waiting for you the to mention you that. you suck, dude? Yeah. The, 
the X hip thrust. Like. She said, uh, bitch. That, that was, was so tight, dude. Yeah. I fucked love her. it. She fucked her up. She Ju- did. Juliana fucked her up the whole fight. She got the finish in the third round, but Brogan was getting her ass kicked the whole time. Yeah, it was, the it's, whole time. It was pretty damn one-sided. Yeah, and honestly, like, I like Juliana a lot. <clears throat> I like her. Uh, After that, I love yeah, her. I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> right? Like, and it, her getting interviewed by Ariel was, like, it made me love her even more. Like, she was cool as fuck. Just chill. Like, good personality. Uh, I look forward to seeing her in the uh, UFC. Same. I'm glad she won. Moving on to the men of the tough, Ooh. Mohammed Usman versus Zach Paiga. We called it. We called it. We, we called, called it. Dude, we said it. Usman's brother is going to get this dub. We didn't think he was going to rage out like that, bro. And, bro, so, like, okay, so when I was watching We're that good. We're, we didn't when I was watching that fight, the whole time I was watching, I was like, he's going to want to wrestle him. He's going to want to wrestle him. And the, um, his opponent, like, Puaga, or however you pronounce his was name. swinging. But no, he was game. He looked good. He didn't get, like, outclassed. He just got clipped. He like, got clipped. Because, it was like, like a, the whole was fight, like a clip punch. It was just of. back and forth, back and forth, and then out of nowhere, like, a hook shot that Usman landed very clean, but you, he didn't even wind up that much. Mm-mm. And as soon as it hit, homie, he planted. He has power. It, yeah. After seeing that, and, like, you look at his physique, you would assume he has yeah, power. Yeah, it's like you're fighting Bowser, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, <you're, laughs> like, how are you gonna, like, dude, he's so huge. And so I was wrong. <clears throat> he's terrifying. He's looking. the little brother. Yeah! Kamara. Yeah, what the fuck? Think about that. And one thing that dude, I loved about huge. this fight, though, this, this, um, it had a big moment. It was the first time that two brothers had ever won the Ultimate Fighter. Because, um, Kamara That's won the Ultimate ass. Fighter. I didn't know that, yeah. And they brought the parents into the cage to applaud what they their parents had done. So if wow. you ask me, that's huge. That's huge as fuck. Like that's one of those moments. I don't know if that'll ever happen again. It's going to be difficult. Like what what I mean, typically as lame as it sounds like you get when you think of brother tandems in MMA, you think of like the Nogueras, the mm-hmm. Diaz brothers. Mm-hmm. Um they're not as notorious, but the Miller brothers, you know what I'm saying? Dan and Jim Miller, like both fought in the UFC. Yep. So like stuff like that. This is one of those rare ones where it's like the pound for pound king is Usman and now his Younger brother, I just see him hitting that title. They're gonna give him if the UFC's smart. I would imagine they're gonna give him a couple favorable matchups. They need to because he was swinging really reckless. Yeah, like if you put that Usman up against like a tie to Ivasa, it's not gonna go well. Even a Derek, you put him against an Alexander Volkov, even a Derek Lewis or a Volkov, it's not gonna. Derek might catch you, like yeah, because Derek has surprisingly fast ass hands. Usman had fast hands, not the fastest in the heavyweight. You know, he had fast hands. He reminded me of um. He was was wild. He was wild. He He reminded me of Cyril Gaon in some ways, but not as calculated. Yeah, like nowhere near as calculated. Crazy man, crazy. Shout out to Muhammad Usman taking the dub on that one. So we had the two winners, Juliana Miller and Muhammad Usman, went in season twenty nine of Tough. How that's a lot of seasons. I've dude, they've had so many. They've had seasons that was like Brazil, all in Portuguese. They've had seasons in like the UK. I'm probably wrong. I don't even know if it's twenty nine. There's so many. I don't care though. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many seasons, like, who cares? Moving on, though, we had oh, my man Winston winning the parlay out for us. Called it. With Jeff Neal knocking out Vincent, Vicente Luque in the third round. I was getting kind of scared, dude. I was getting kind of scared, but... Neal was owning him. The, and the only reason I was getting scared, because I didn't think this was going to be... I thought this was going to be the only fight that didn't get a finish. Mm. But Jeff just poured it on him. Dude. Jar- Jeff was beating his ass the whole fight. Like when he, he kind of made him look amateur. When he won, the combo that he won straight up looked like he was... If you're playing, like, the UFC video game, and you just button mash uppercut, like, 17 times. Right. Because, dude, he just... It was just like, mm, mm, mm. And then he made him look like <clears throat> like he didn't belong, which is a really rare occasion. Which is weird yeah. for Vicente Luque. Where does he go now? I mean, I he's still know. relevant. He's still he going to get a really good fight for his next fight. I mean, it's deep waters. The real question is, what's next for Jeff Neal? He's kind of stuck right now. What? Well, pull up the um, welterweight rankings, if, okay? If you could, yeah, I'm gonna. So let's see. Because um, Luke was like second or third, or he was up there, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. So <clears throat> Colby's got to be up there. Jorge's got to be up there. Where the fuck is it? Um, welterweight. So we have a uh, champion, Kamara Usman. Yep. Number one. Going down. So Colby, yep. Leon Edwards, Hamzat Shamayev, Gilbert Burns, Bala Muhammad, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Sean Brady, Jeff Neal at number eight, jumping five spots. Then Jorge Masvidal, Vicente Luque, Shavkat Rachmanov, Michael Chiesa, Neil Magny, Li Jingliang, and Michael Fajeda. So he's going to pray for like... if Michelle Fajeda, excuse <clears throat> me. He's, his best bet, 
Um, because almost everyone you named ahead of him is tied up. I would say every like, uh, Kobe's not. Kobe's I mean, tied up in some legal battles. That's what I was about to say. Like Leon tied up, Hamzat tied up, Gilbert's not. Mm, I don't know if he was get, like if he's ready for that. I don't think he's ready either. Uh, Stevens Wonder Boy is probably yeah, his Stephen. only. I would say Wonder Boy is his best bet if they. Sean Brady's fought. tied up with Bilal. Jorge's tied up. Vince, Vicente Luque just lost to him. Mm-hmm. Shavkat Rahmanov. I mean, if we're talking lower than that, why are we talking lower than that? Because Jeff Neal's number eight. We shouldn't even be punching lower. Yeah, he's gonna get. Yeah, a he top, wants. He's up. gonna get like. I would six say or five. a Wonder Boy mm-hmm. or Gilbert Burns. Hmm. I take my money for both of those fights. <laughs> right, 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 right. I don't know if Wonder Boy wants to smoke with Jeff. No. Have they fought? I feel like they've fought before. I feel like they might have. That's why I asked. Yeah. It's one of those like know. name combinations that just sounds familiar. And we're not even matchmakers, but again, I take my money for Gilbert, Gilbert Burns, Jeff Neal. I don't even know if that makes sense, though. If Neal can get, like, I don't know, like, it just depends. Like, one of these um, upcoming make, fights, if he gets the loser. <clears throat> it makes so, like, everything weird with the Hamzat Nate Diaz thing. That is a money. Makes fight. everything weird. That's just I know, a money but fight. it still make like Nate wins. Then he is he number three. I mean, I mean, he's yeah. gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. So it it, it doesn't really you're matter. Right, you're right. He's leaving. He's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been in a perfect world, huh? Yeah. But moving on, Jeff Neal getting the dub in round three. Mind mm-hmm. you, shout out to Winston for calling up, dude. I mean, we've hit. We're two and one right now, boys. We're yeah. doing good. And the only reason we're one on the other one is because fucking some bullshit. Like we won one fuck, or we lost one out of all the parlays we've made. We've lost lost one leg of all. And whose leg was that? Who's Dave's? It was the Bear Jew. Yeah, it was the Bear Jew. <laughs> Which it was bias. You know, Dave. He, likes he did him, pick a. He did so. pick a bias my leg. Favorite. Yeah. That's what happens so. when you pick bias legs? Exactly. You got to pick smart legs. Yeah. So I think we just got to avoid the the <laughs> the bias people we really enjoy. One Sometimes thing, you can oh. be biased and actually anticipate they would win. That was a fight that, like, he was only going to win in some dramatic comeback. So, Got you. Now, moving forward, all bets henceforth will be based practically. <laughs> <laughs> no more losing legs, Dave. Okay? This is a fucking... It's a bear no, Jew. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> I'm never going to... I was holding it against him last week for picking Jeff Neal. I was scared. I was legit scared. I was like, dude, he's fighting Vicente Luque. When you like, have a name like Jeff Neal, you just don't lose. <laughs> When you have two first names, you whoop ass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Especially against guys like Vicente. It's not like Winston's just picking off the breeze, dude. Like He's, he's picking <laughs> mascots at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, okay. uh, Amanda Nunes, I had pretty confidence in. That one was calculated, but the Jeff Neal one was just... Really? You're just throwing shit at the wall, huh? <laughs> Jeff Neal, for sure. Really? Oh, yeah. I had no idea who Jeff Neal was. <laughs> Winston, no do not do that with our he, fucking he parlay. Kicked his ass. He did kick his ass, but don't yeah. do that with our parlay, dude. You're gonna well, fucking. I don't even know who's. We don't. Honestly, week, we so. shouldn't tell Winston anything. He has not lost a leg. Yeah, let's just keep he on. Has, yeah, he has not lost a leg. I might just let the breeze keep going, Neither dude. Neither of you, because I, I haven't either, bro. Yeah. I haven't either. I've lost some bets, but like I haven't lost. A, I've been doing really well for myself betting wise. Yeah. Um, I do get it from like I, I have good sources, like that Connor Burks homie. Like he's from the MMA Hour, and he's their betting guy, and he hits. He's up like fucking almost fifty units since he's been doing it. Which is if so, if you count a unit is fifty dollars. That's that's his unit is fifty dollars. Oh, gotcha. He's fucking almost up 50 units, which is in- insane. Also on um, The King and the Sting or the Brennan Chobb show when he has his Nick producer, Nick's Picks. Nick's Picks that is dude's fire a, too. Uh, he's a like, he left college to gamble type vibes. So Damn. he definitely made some money doing it. Mm-hmm. He's doing good on his He's not picks flawless, too. but he's a definitely. I don't think he I gives would, his picks away though, does he? They, yeah, they do Nick's Pick segments at least. When? On either The King and the Sting or Chobb show. I haven't seen him for a long time. I haven't tuned in recently. Ah, I see you. But yeah. when I, all, every time I would tune in, they would talk about it. Shab is somebody good to pay, play off of, too, because he knows a lot of knowledge. Yeah. I, I get a lot of my knowledge off fighters mm-hmm. and people in the game. Like, yeah. that's kind of, you know, not a, like a lot Nick of fighters. Like, even <laughs> Al, Aljamain Sterling has good picks and good insight on stuff. You know who has good picks Anthony for Anthony Pettis. Who? Funky Ben Askren. Ben Askren, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll have to ask him how that Bitcoin's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's probably still making money off of no, it. he's flying still up. NFTs. Dude, he got into Bitcoin years ago. He's still up on money. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Um. But <clears throat> yeah, moving on, man, to this main event, this light heavyweight main event. Tiago Santos not looking like the same Tiago Santos that we love and remember losing to Jamal Hill. But honestly, it was a really good battle, and I would say Tiago Santos was probably up in the cards. Before it that. was, yeah, he looked. He great. was up in the cards before that, so he's still a contender. He's just not the old Tiago Santos before the double fucking knee blowout. 
So Hill in this fight honestly reminded me of not um, stylistically or even talent comparison wise, but he reminded me of like almost like when John Jones when he was fighting like Gustafson the first time. I was time. about to say Gus because he, he had to dig deep. In, he fought in the fire. Like Hill was eating devastating punches Fuck. avoiding devastating punches it mm. wasn't like an outclass it was like he went to was war, a war and he won it was a war so like and we, he's battle tested now N- yeah and that there's not a lot of people that can say they're battle tested against tiago santos like yeah. full on fighting yeah t- like in when San- you fight tiago santos you're point fighting his ass like Der- jamal was in there bro in santos um he was in there he's got like a tko win over former light heavyweight champion jan blockowitz so it's like he just fought a champion quality man who's devastated a former champion. So have like, you know it's Blahovich? You fucking. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but either way though, like the reason I emphasize that, like MMA math doesn't necessarily work. Like you beat them, it's not like rock paper scissors. You don't automatically like beat their the people they beat. We see that a lot. People will lose to the others, but the what mm-hmm. his level of competition has risen every time, and this is the first time we've been able to say like, damn, that man just beat a champion competitor mm. like no questions asked so his next fight it's has got to be bananas yeah it's gonna be crazy i don't know who i wonder where they are on the ring let's check the rankings huh yeah let's keep that i have to yuri assume, champ yeah yuri's gonna rematch um glover, glover if i have to assume which is the number one glover and then yon's just yon's chilling. number two so yon's chilling magomed Ankhalaev, number three Damn. alexander rockic number four anthony smith five jamal hill moves four spots up to number six Jamal Hill will probably leapfrog Anthony Smith because of the injury scenario, not mm-hmm. because of quality, just because of who's going to fight when. Damn, it's an open. It looks yeah. like an open chopping so, block, dude. Ankhalaev uh, just won. So I don't want to give... Rockich is off of an injury. Rockich is out right Don't now. give Hill Ankhalaev because Ankhalaev, I honestly think, deserves Jan more personally because I think Ankhalaev mm-hmm. is our next champion. I'm pretty sure Jamal Hill lost to Jan before, too. Like, let's just face it. When Ankhalaev gets his hands on Yuri or Glover... I think he's winning that, and I. Love, I think Yuri's winning all of these fights. I love Yuri. He's like a fan favorite. He's but too like, big, dude. But Ankalaev has that like Dagestani cheat code wrestling, bro. I don't and think it's, it's gonna be enough. It's true. It's a two of five, but for Glover, it wasn't enough. And Glover's a fuck. The, has been one of the best wrestlers in the division for so long. Glover is an outlier, and he couldn't keep him down. <laughs> he couldn't keep him down. Like I don't know, Yuri's just like Yuri's like that dark horse, bro. Like he came in. Out of nowhere, fought in um, Japan a lot. Dominic Reyes. Oh. Dominic hasn't been back since. Spinning, um, like wasn't it a spinning elbow? Spinning elbow it against was, the cage. That was devastating. He Dominic hasn't been back since. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. So like, I think Yuri wins all these fights. I think he's gonna beat Glover again. Me too. I think he'll beat Jan. I think he'll beat Ankalaev. I think he'll beat. I don't know. I think honestly, Jamal Hill has the best. Stylistically, Yuri. Yuri and Jamal Hill. J- Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill and it, Yuri. That's will, the style matchup that, he wants. That will sell more pay per views than any matchup in that whole division. And I think it's in his favor if they fight. If they fight, if Jamal Hill fights Yuri Prohaska, Yuri's got to have his p's and q's, dude. Because Jamal is a fucking yeah, murderer the, on the feet. The way that he fought Glover, he can't do that. He against cannot Jamal Hill. do that against Jamal. You can't Jamal flirt Hill. with danger like that because Jamal mm-hmm. Hill. I, I'm not trying to compare who hits harder. I can just say for certain that it's just like he's a different animal. You know what I'm saying? He's mm-hmm. throwing to devastate you as to where I think Glover knows how to like t- tone down his punches for the sake of his cardio. Mm-hmm. And even though his toned down punches are still like destroying anyone he touches. So it's crazy, dude. Oh, that's, a, that's well, such I'm an exciting Jamal matchup. Hill, Jamal Hill got the win. Decisively got the win. I mean, I don't know about decisively. He was losing the fight, but. He got the win. Pulled it together. Pulled it together. And uh, that was that was the last fights, man. Let's go over these bets I had, dude, because yeah. I told you guys off cam, I hit every single parlay last week. Let's go. 100% on the parlays last week. Let's go over them a little bit. Rick's see what picks. I had. Yeah. We don't own that, but Rick's picks. <laughs> see, what I, see what I had <clears throat> in my bets here. Let me log in again. God, I, That's one thing about these betting apps that I hate, bro. You got to log in every time, bro. Yeah. A- every time, dude. Um, what oh, betting man. apps are you frequenting? It's like FanDuel. DraftKings and FanDuel. Okay. Those are my two. I kind of want to try out Stake, though. Have you ever seen mybookie.ag? They I advertise that, that on um, 
the uh that was like the big first... john big john mccarthy and josh thompson that was like show. the first one i ever seen like advertised there's so many betting apps now bro it's so many crazy there's so many and they all have incentives too yeah like almost every single oh, one it's nice it's like I sign up it. connect your free money connect your payment info and then we'll give you like x amount in free bets yeah. all right so going over these bets let's go over our uh built parlay last week we built up so every week we build a parlay here guys and we and we don't keep it in the moment. Yeah, so. it's in the moment. We're you not. Know, it's just off of. We're not experts, but we we just, we're hitting. We're, we're hitting, dude. We're two and one right now. We hit last week. And my thing is that a lot of people like to build these parlays that are like minus a hundred, plus a hundred. You know, stay around there. We hit a plus three twenty five parlay last week. Yes, sir. mostly because of Winston, really. Like we both had sure picks. Well, so the first one we had, uh, the first leg was. Terrence McKinney and Eric Gonzalez to not go the distance, minus 650. That's obviously going to hit. <laughs> then we also had a Augusto Sakai and Sergey Spivak to not go the distance. For me, it was obviously going to hit. It was a minus 225 as well. So the books thought it too. But Winston pulling out the big cojones and picking a Jeff Neal at plus 155 money line. Yes, yep. sir. All parlayed up to get that plus 325 hitting for us. <laughs> hitting for us. So if you bet on that, that parlay that we did last week, guys, you would have four times your money. Hell you would yeah. have four times your money and some. So, you know, shout out to Winston for taking the big leg on that one because that was a big leg. It was very risky because of Vincente Luque versus Jeff Neal is a risky thing. But when they were in there and I was watching the fight, I was like, Winston's got this one in the bag. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. 50-50 tops up, you know what I mean? Win yep. some, you lose some. You win some, you lose some. And that's what we're here for, you know? Like, we don't expect to win every single week. But... Talking about this next parlay, I had actually picked up another parlay from minus 101. I picked up Brian Battle, minus 295, Terrence McKinney, minus 850, and a Jamal Hill, minus 300. So I picked a favorite. I did like a favorites parlay. Um, I was like, these guys are all going to win. Easy parlay, easy money. I'm going to double my money real quick. So that's what I did, a minus 101 win. Then I picked up a plus 108 three-leg parlay. I, I did Sergey Spivak, Augusto Sakai to not go the distance again. I did a Tiago Santos, Jamal Hill to not go the distance. And I did a Terrence McKinney, Eric Gonzalez, not to go the distance. That was another, like, I just seen all the legs. I seen them parlayed up. I was like, a plus 108. This is great. This is a great bet right here. Yeah. This is a free money, basically. So, boom, again, doubled my money on that. Hit that leg. Then, boom, I kind of got a little more specific with this parlay here. So, uh, I did another three-pick parlay for a plus 183. I did a Terrence McKinney to win by KO for a minus 400, a Jamal Hill to win by KO, minus 175, and for Augusto Sakai and Sergey Spivak to not go the distance. So, okay, I hit a lot of these same bets, but I parlayed them up a lot different, and I hit every goddamn one of them. It's nice because I needed that shit. I doubled yeah. I doubled my bet money up. Like, it was fucking How much did you nice. win from all your bets this weekend? Um, I doubled up. I, I was only betting five. <laughs> so my units... That I bet with, I put five dollars per unit, so I've only really done one unit per bet. Because I don't know, I'm not fucking, I'm not trying to lose all my money with. Yeah. But, cause <laughs> but betting on fights is so hard because one punch can change everything. Yeah. Whether you're a favorite of fucking not. It's entertainment for it's me. Inter- yeah, it, it gets betting. me more involved. Exactly. So that's why I throw five. I, I usually, I used to do ten dollar bets, but I dimmed it down to five dollars because I don't want to lose everything. Yeah. Um. So I fucking just do five dollar bets. I just doubled my money. I was at like twenty bucks, and then I ended up with like fifty seven sixty six. Oh, yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. Don't they have um betting clause where like if there's a fighter or a fight where you really anticipate it's going to go to a decision, if you're just going to do like an outcome based bet, that if it goes to decision it nullifies it. Yeah, it so it's it. called a decision no bet. Yeah, that's the type of thing that I would lean into mm-hmm. because like not to say that a lot of fights go to a decision, like this the whole most recent fight card that would have been a waste of a bet or a waste of a clause because they all finished. That being mm-hmm. said, um Crazy. There's, ton- there's a lot of champion fighters that like without trying to be hateful um someone's like a like a george st pierre in his prime or like izzy they're not to refer to them as decision fighters but they're very conservative when they fight so it's like if you were just betting on the outcome of them losing because you like the odds the decision could be um controversial you know and then you could then have a layer of do you, i think i justifiably lost that money so mm-hmm. i found when i was just doing personal bets with friends like um <clears throat> if I would avoid decisions, I'd be like, hey, if it goes to a decision, bet's off. We can argue that all day. So for the sake of my money, I think it's a safer bet. Ex- assuming you're just betting on who wins. Mm. I forgot, what, what's that bet called when it's just an outcome-based bet? 
What do you mean? Like, you're not betting on a parlay. You're just like, oh, I'm betting so and so is going to win. That's money line. Like, yeah, money line <clears throat> bet. I couldn't mm-hmm. think of that term. Yeah, you're good. Money yeah. line. I love I love betting, dude. It, I've had a lot of fun. I've made a lot. I've made a lot of money. Like, oh yeah. Over since I started, I've only put fifty dollars in my app, and I've been playing for months. Um, I took out a hundred dollars twice. I took out fifty dollars once. And I haven't put money in since. I've just Hell been yeah. playing off of it. So, like, it's been fun, dude. It's been cool. Like, oh, yeah. it, I'm glad I've been able to keep the money. Like, I haven't had to load money in. Like, that's been nice. I loaded money into FanDuel, and I lost the 20 bucks that I loaded it on there. But, yeah, ever since then, I haven't really been playing it. I like FanDuel, though, because it has different lines at different times. Like, that's the thing with these lines. Like, I tried to bet a same-game parlay for Bellator tonight, and they don't have any same-game parlays for Bellator. Why? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, Jeff fix Fiends that shit. has more shit. I yeah. Think, than do, do they... Oh, do they? I, th- I think they do. Mm. I, f- I don't think FanDuel Because is... my thing is, like, the earliness. Like, I've had FanDuel open lines a week before uh, DraftKings does. Oh, really? For fighting anyways. Yeah. Because I'm always looking to get the earliest, like, I like doing props. I like doing, like, round props or fighter props or, you know, strike prop. Whatever whatever props I can get my hands on. Most of them are to, if you guys have been watching the show, to not go the distance. You know, that's what I've been picking a lot on. Like, fights to end, fights to go the distance, stuff like that. And FanDuel has those up earlier. Yep. Um, I've, been, I've really been fucking with DraftKings more, though. Just because that's where all my money's chilling. Yeah. Really, I mean, they they kind of look the same. Um, DraftKings just changed their layout. Have you guys noticed that they like change their like if you update their shit, their like parlays look different and shit now. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Um, let's go over uh, Dana White contender series, huh? Yeah. How about we do that? How about we do that? So Dana White contender series was not like last week. Hard to follow. Hard to follow last week. We had three decisions to it. Um, Two decisions, only one contract going out. So we had five contracts going out last week, all all finishes. Two contracts went out, I thought. All contracts last week. Oh, no, no, one contract. Bo Nickel didn't get one. No, it was um that one heavyweight I thought got a contract. Oh, yeah, 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 two. Yep, yeah. you're right. You're right. Got you're it. Right. <laughs> we'll Jamal, Por- uh, Jamal Porges. All right, so the five fights, let's go over them. Carolina Wosik defeats Sandra Lovato in a UD. Um, I actually missed that one. I didn't get to watch that one. I got home a little late. Didn't get to see that fight. Um, kind of a snoozer. Was, yeah, was it a snoozer? They, she was really hyped. She won. I, I mean, got to see her like hype that she won. But she won thirty twenty seven. But um, they yeah. like from all like, three, tell, all three of them too. The sentiment from the corner was like you really didn't like you didn't really do enough. Like you know what uh, I mean? Like you did enough to win, and that's great. But you didn't get the Connie. Yeah, like you hadn't done. That's what like, happens? Winning, dude. but then again, winning in the contender series is how you get invited back. to the contender Wait, no, series. he gave away three contracts this week. I'm tripping. Well, I think Bo Nichols was like a like a refight contract. Mm-mm. Clayton Carpenter versus Edgar uh, Cheris. Chairis. That was a good fight. That was a good fight. It was a unanimous decision, but it was a hard fought battle. Clayton has his fat cut under his eye now. His yeah, eye was shut. Um, but Dana gave him the contract too. So we have Clayton Carpenter getting a contract uh, with his UD win over Edgar uh, Cheris. And that dude fights with um, Brennan Moreno. Mm-hmm. Or Moreno, I'm sorry. And Cheris dropped him, I think. And it Clayton, was, came, Clayton came back. First round, he was beating him up. And Beat then up. Clayton just kind of like weathered the storm and then just kept Took coming over. at him. And like he wasn't, it was not one sided. He just definitely was getting the best of the round two and three. Mm-hmm. But he went out there. He it was tried. a war. It was one of those wars, you know, fighting back and forth. One thing that wasn't a war, though, Eric Silva defeating uh, Anvar Boynozavarov. Yeah, we're going it's with that. Boy Nazarov. Bo- hey, that's what's up, Dave. I think that's my American way <laughs> of pronouncing That's what's up, Dave. Well, yeah, uh, he TKO'd him in one minute and 32 seconds of the first round. Um, Day, you heard Dana and, like, I don't know, everybody talking about the fight saying Eric was way too big for that fucking division. Like, he just towered over him. Way bigger guy. Yeah. They, we all kind of expected this to happen just seeing them next to each other. So shout out to Eric, though. He still got the contract. Um, I don't think he's going to be fighting at that uh, weight, though. That's the thing. Not if Dana has not anything if Dana, to say. Exa- and that's what Dana said. He's like, he ain't going to fight it that way. <laughs> He's like, he's way too big to be there. <clears throat> but Jamal Porges defeats uh, Paolo Renato Jr. by UD. Um, and that's the thing. So I, I bet on these Dana White contender series fights, I bet 
Um, two bets. I bet a parlay for a bunch of them to not go the distance. Didn't hit any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hit any of them. I, I these actually, are riskier. Yeah, these are way riskier. You don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I just threw change at it. Um, and then we actually had Bo Nickel showing up and f- fucking up Borrego okay, in like so, a minute. So for those who don't know First who round. Bo Nickel is, if I'm not mistaken, he was um, Big 12 Athlete of the Year. He's and like he, one of the best, and wrestlers. he was a yeah, he was a wrestler for I believe Penn State, mm. and like when he went in because he's had one MMA fight, and the guy he fought was like it looked like someone's dad. Like not trying to be mean, but who knows? It's your first MMA fight. We're gonna feed you someone. So this was his second pro fight, and in his first pro fight, he knocked homie out in like probably two minutes or less. So in this fight, we were like, okay, what's he capable of? So the guy he was faced against, Borrego, I kind of feel like they were feeding him like to. Bo Nickel, no offense. Like, you think so? I think. That, I mean, it, from the, how the fight went out. Well, the thing that intrigues me is like a minute. Bo a Nickel minute. has so much potential, but he went pro instantly. He had zero amateur fights. His athleticism is definitely going to translate in MMA, as we're seeing. But like, it's too new. Too no great. amount of athleticism is ever going to prepare you for getting punched in the face. Yeah, and he, he, I don't think he got punched at all this fight. He didn't get touched. And it was so quick. So he like touched. He's going to get a lot of wins looking kind of like what we just saw, but the second he goes up against someone who's just like, all right, I know you're going to take me down, but I'm going to hit you with the meanest uppercut or knee on the way, we're going to see what that looks like. So mm. has he seen adversity yet? No, but Dana did give Bo Nickel the, the green light to say, hey, we're going to bring you back to the contender series. We're going to give you one more fight, and if you win that one, I'm sure he's getting the contract. Yeah, and that's yep. That's why I think he's gonna win it too. I know. Uh, one thing I did do though, I seen how big of an underdog Borrego was, and I was like, "There's no way plus twelve Borrego is gonna win this fight by sub. There's no way he's gonna win this fight by UD." In mm-hmm. my in my eyes, I seen that not happening because it's Bo Nickel. Yep. Um. So I said the only way this Zach Borrego dude is going to win is if he knocks out Bo Nickel out of nowhere and does one of the biggest upsets that we're ever going to see on Dana White Contender Series. So what I did is I put a dollar and I threw it on my man, Zachary Borrego, for a plus 5,000 bet for him to win by knockout. Mm. Boy, was I wrong. So <laughs> damn. But- and that's why I only put a dollar on it because I was like, Bo Nickel's probably going to choke him out. Yeah. And what I should have done is I should have picked up the Bo Nickel submission for plus 250. Well, uh, according to the UFC's um, Instagram, when they were advertising the fights that day, the um, DraftKings odds for just um, the money line was Bo Nickel plus, or sorry, minus 2,400 and Borrego plus 1,200. You can't even parlay those up. So you, you can't, you can't even parlay that. No. Why would you even want to? No. <laughs> like, that's why I was like, look at these odds. I'm going to put a dollar on Zach Borrego just in case like God is like, fuck you, Bo Nickel. Yeah, <laughs> like, like and these things happen. I, and I literally expected Bone. I was like, Bone is gonna murder this man. I thought, <laughs> I honestly thought he was gonna knock him out though, because he he's coming off of a knockout win. Yeah, the last dude he fought was a knockout win. Yeah. In, like, in the first round. He might have so, had that. I was like, I think he might knock this guy out again. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to bet on Bo Nickel. His odds lines are so crazy. I should have picked up the sub one though. Um, but I was like, eh, I'm just gonna throw a dollar. See what the fuck this ha- happens with this dude. Plus <laughs> five. Plus five thousand. What do I have to lose? You're right. At one dollar. So I was like, yeah, at one dollar. I was like, yeah. <laughs> if I won, I would have won fucking... Like 49 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like fucking... <laughs> it would have been sick. But whatever. I kind of... Bo Nickel is a boss. I was at first surprised he didn't get a uh, contract, but then I was like, oh, he's only had one MMA fight. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, oh, that was his second ever... Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Like... It makes sense. The only person that's ever went into the UFC with a 1-0 and o professional MMA record is Brock Lesnar. Yep, I was waiting for you to say the it. The only person. And, and that's heavy. I don't think we'll ever see another person do that. I don't no. think Dan is not in that realm anymore. He Even with Bo Nickel, one of the greatest wrestlers to ever do it, he's like, oh, we should wait. We're just learning. And if you watch like mm-hmm. um, Bellator and stuff like that, when they take these like other athlete prodigies and they try to integrate them, it either doesn't work or they really got to fish for competition to make it easy for them. Like a Dylan Danis. Great for ratings. Great for oh, ratings. Oh, yeah. Great. They're like, oh, Bo Nickel was on Dana White Contender Series. Let's bring him fucking back. Well, the funny thing that I think is I think... Let's, get, let's get these viewerships going again. I think those wrestlers have so much crossover into MMA that the, it, all it really did was put collegiate eyes on the Contender right. Series. Because let's face it, like a lot of those wrestling rooms are training with soon-to-be MMA fighters or current MMA fighters. So, like that being said... That's huge. And, like, hopefully more, um, like, collegiate wrestlers try to make the jump to MMA 
I, I agree it's not that lucrative, but if they want to stay in their athletic mindset, then I think that's, like, the way to go. I would rather go MMA than, like, the Olympics for the... Like, if you're one of those prodigies and everyone knows, like, you're ranked and anticipating the Olympics, go do that. But mm. MMA is a great avenue for a lot of these professional athletes or these collegiate athletes, I'm sorry. It's crazy. The game's changing, dude. We're still in our baby steps, too. Like, MMA is a fetus right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, like, we're barely... Like, it's, it's been legal in New York for a handful of years now. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, we're... Infancy. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're nowhere where we're going to be later on. It's kind of crazy. Um, moving on, though. Let's move right on. I mean, Dana White Contender Series is always going to be something I'm going to be watching. I can't wait for next week. Yeah, now we're moving on to UFC San Diego. I'm probably not going to be betting on it a lot, though, because it's so risky. It's oh, hard. Yeah. It's hard to figure out. Um, so let's go over these. I mean, this card isn't very deep, but we will be going. Let's just say there's some there's some there's relevant some, there's names, some, there's some hitters. Some, yeah, and I have bets on a lot of these guys, so we'll go over it. We'll start off with the, the Bantamweight bout, starting off the prelims, Yusuf Zalal versus Damon Blackshear. Um, if you're asking me, I think Yusuf Zalal is going to get that one. I guess, I don't know. I'm not going to give out picks right here. Let's just go over it. Jason Witt versus Josh Quinlan, going to be a nice fight at catchweight. Um, I don't know who or why it's going to be catchweight. I think this is one of the fights that they moved to this card. Yeah, this is supposed not, to be last week. I'm not seeing it on old fight um, yeah. posters. So and I honestly I don't know I'm not giving picks but Josh Quinlan gonna win <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Oat Osborne versus Tyson Nam that one's not going the distance I can definitely say that um, these two fighters are definitely both people that finish or get finished yep like like there's no in between I think that would be one to definitely bet on not to go the distance same um, going for Gabriel ben- Benitez and Charlie Ontiveros. I don't know if this one's going to go to the... ZZ is acting up. Yo, ZZ... I hit her in the face. (laughs) (laughs) Why'd you hit her in the face? I didn't hit her in the face. I just poked her. She didn't like it. How come she always act up for sport champs, bro? She don't fuck with sports? (laughs) Bullshit. So, Uh, (laughs) tell me Ontivero's hair doesn't look like a Swiffer Duster. It does. (laughs) I'm going to need y'all to Google Charlie Ontivero's. (laughs) No offense to you, guy. No offense. You take no my offense. head off. I don't know. Should we be breaking these down? I think we should be breaking these down more for Winston. He's going to be taking some bad bets this week. Right, well, I'm not picked, too I familiar. Picked I'm going to put my money on. Really? Yep. Mascot chosen. Yep. Okay. Mascot all right. Chosen. Mascot chosen. We're not going to say shit. Hopefully, we can break it down a little better so he gets a better break, idea, break though. Break it down. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do picks while we go over these. Yusuf Zalal, I think, is going to win. Josh Quinlan, I think, is going to win because Josh Quinlan is coming off of a lot of knockout wins. Jason Witt has gotten locked, knocked out a lot, so that's another one that's not going to go to the distance. Odd Osborne, Tyson Nam, just talked about that one, not going the distance. Yep. Flyweights usually don't go the distance. Fly, flyweights like to stay under 2.5, mm-hmm. uh, so two and a half rounds usually is when it happens for the flyweights. So expect that one to go down right, right away. Gabriel Benitez, I don't know. I think I want to go f- with Benitez on this one because I've seen him more. He's the more experienced fighter that I know of. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to do a little more research on this Charlie Ontiveros if I want to bet on him. But moving on, we got Cynthia Calvillo taking on Nina Nunez. This one is at the lines for it. Like, if you look at the lines for DraftKings, the lines are pretty good for it to go. I mean, they were. I don't know what they are now, but they were when to go the distance. This has distance written all over it. So I think, you know, take the over 2.5 or take the, you know. I would I would disagree. <laughs> Cynthia I, Calvillo and Nina Nunez? I feel like, um, I feel like Amanda f- Nunez's wife is going to get God again. Her last fight was against um, Mackenzie Dern. Not Cynthia Calvillo, though. No. What is Cynthia going to do? She's just a juggernaut of a woman. She has I know, but like, when's the last? Her last finish is non-existent. I just, I without being mean, I don't think Nina Nunes has the like that Mamba mentality, if you will. You know what I mean? I don't think she can put someone out. I think her path to victory. Oh, I'm wrong. I think Nina Nunes's path to victory is like a scramble and then landing an armbar. I'm tripping. Oh, I'm not tripping. Cynthia Calvillo is coming off two knockout losses. Well, that's not good, but Nina does not have hands like that. And Cynthia hasn't gotten a... F- I don't even think Cynthia has a finish on her record, I, brother. I'm not... Oh, pre- she does. Her uh, last finish was in 2018 by sub. I'm not necessarily preaching that she's going to win by finish. I just don't think that that's going the distance. Because I think, I, think I, I don't think Nunez is going to be able to uh, go 15 minutes with her. I think she can. That's my honest... It's Nina Ansarov, bro. We've seen Ansarov hit a lot of decisions. 
I, I think she's got a lot of will, but I think Calveo is like, she's just a brawler. Let's see. Nina Nunez, her last fought, she got subbed by Mackenzie Dern. I mean, it's Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. She went the distance with Tatiana Suarez. That's pretty good. Went the distance with Clyde Gadelia. Went the distance with Rana Marcos. Went the distance with Angela Hill. Got subbed by Jocelyn Jones. Well, if she survived Angela Hill, I could see These are a lot of decisions, dude. If she lived through Hill, I could see it. Because Hill's a beast. Hill, and she's she's on this card. She's fighting, yeah, this card. I, that's one person I think is going to lose. Angela Hill. Damn. I hate to hate, but like I think she's going to lose this time. Um, <clears throat> going back to these fights. Sorry. No, no, no. It's good. It's good we go down these, these paths a little bit because there's. I guarantee there's people that agree and disagree. But yeah, Cynthia Calvillo, Nina Nunes, uh, flyweight. Be on the lookout for that one. After them, we're having a heavyweight showdown. Martin Bude, or do you think it's Bude or Bude? Um, B U D A Y. It's probably it's Bude. Yeah, Bude. <laughs> Martin Bude <laughs> fighting Lukas Bresky. Um, heavyweight. Yeah, it's a heavyweight. This is anybody's fight. Yeah. I wonder what the lines are on this. I don't. Have I don't any even remember on this one. Uh, Minus three ten for Bade. Oof. Plus two forty for. Sponsored Luke, by Luke Tushy. God damn. Okay, that's what I'm saying. That's a fuck. Minus three hundred. You want to know how I know Bude's yeah. um trending to win? It's because on this fight poster I'm seeing um Bresky's photo is in black and white. <laughs> oh man <Damn. laughs> the only out. one on the whole that poster. actually kind of dude you, you gotta watch out for the dudes in black and white you gotta watch out for those motherfuckers you dude. zoom out and it's a mugshot did you see what happened to me <laughs> fucking not last week the week before that fucking hot job uh, is lo- what the fuck was that guy's name i don't even <laughs> I, I fucking bet against him and he beat his ass he beat dante Mays. ass it was the guy that dante Mays fought i forgot his name it's like hot Hajlib or something? I don't know, fucking know. I'm not going to Regardless. Try. Regardless. Uh, the main prelim fight is Angela Hill versus Lupita Godi- Godinez. There we go. I almost fucked so that So this one. is at a, a catch Lupita, weight. Lupita, Team Lupi, dude. I think Lupi's taking this one. Mm, I, I mean, I think she's favored to win, but I, I'm a huge Angela Hill fan. I am too. It's I love just her. hard, bro. 13 and 12. So some... Okay. I'm not... More her, than half of those are decisions she probably should have won. I was about to say, she, like, when her loss to... Um, her last loss, she should have won. Yeah, like she has two decision losses that um, I can't think of the name of the fighters at the moment. Forgive me, but they were like, like she was shocked when she got the decision read of loss type vibes, and I was on the same team. Like, granted, I'm very biased for her. Like, I like her personality. Like, she plays a lot of video games and streams and stuff. So, shout out, shout out Angela, Angela Hill. Hill. But oh my I god, I think Loopy is gonna fuck her up. Yeah, I wanted to bet money on Loopy, but. This is at a catch. Angela weight, Hill is the type of fighter to prove everybody wrong mm-hmm. and win by decision tonight, like tomorrow night. Like, and not to get too. It's hard. That's why I didn't put money on her. I was like, mm. not to get off track at all. Just off. side comment. Um, are you familiar with like the whole Bobby Hill um, alien abduction yeah. story? That's yeah, her Bar- grandpa, uh, Barney. It's Barney Hill and. Um, Betty. Thank Betty you. Hill. Yeah, that's her Barney and Betty. Yeah. I know, and I wish that's Joe crazy. would get her back on to talk about it. Hurry up. Like, we yeah. talked about this a year ago, and Joe was like, oh, I got to get you back on, and you never got her back on, bro. Get her back on. I know she's 13 and 12, but her grandparents are Barney and Betty Hill. Get this bitch back on the podcast. I mean, this respectable woman on the podcast. She's a beast. <laughs> I don't want to call Angela Hill a bitch. Good I'm, I'm Good the safe. bitch when it comes to me and Angela Hill, bro. If it's me or Angela Hill, I'm the bitch in the situation, I feel like. Yeah. I feel like I'm shorter. I'm less strong. She's got a cooler name. I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a cooler name, though. She just, I don't know. She's Her just, grandparents are cooler than my grandparents. I mean, it's hard to be cooler, have cooler grandparents. It is. How do, um, so according to what I'm reading, this is at 120 pound catch weight. How do you feel about that? I don't know why they're doing it. It has to have been because one of the fighters Something. realized they weren't going to make weight and they probably mutually agreed. Because, like, typically when they come to one fighter and they're like, hey, are you on track for weight? They're like, yep. Your opponent has come to us and said that it's gonna. they probably won't make weight. And then they could either do, hey, they're going to miss weight and you get a percentage of their purse. Or they might come to a mutual agreement to where they can meet at a catch weight. And then Angela Hill can be like, or whoever is not going to make weight can be like, all right, cool. I now know I can slow down my weight cut. I can train a little bit more. So it's kind of a win-win. I don't know if that's the case, but the fact that it's at a catch weight leads me to believe that's the case. Because they don't ever sign for fights in the beginning at a catch weight. Mm. That's just not a strategy the UFC likes. It's weird. Cause I then, wonder why they're at a catch weight. I kind of don't like it. I kind of don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. There's no reason why I shouldn't like it. But moving on, let's go to the main card, bro. Main card. Bruno Silva starting out with Gerald Merchart. 
I'm good. I actually, I think I put money on Bruno. Silva looks yeah. like Rudy Gobert. Yeah, he's. I think he's coming off a bunch of wins. Winston, too. let's see. Can you see this from here? Homie looks like Rudy Gobert. Nope, he lost a decision he does. to the guy that left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Devin so looks like Rudy Silva, Gobert. Silva's the guy who lost to Fajeda. Oh, Alex yeah. Alex Fajeda in decision. He's the only guy to take him to decision. Damn. Um, and three fights before that, Bruno Silva by first round KO. Third round KO and first round KO. Isn't he really skinny? I don't know. I don't think so. No, 185. He's not really skinny. Yeah, no. Forgive me. I think Gerald Morris Sharp might get knocked out, dude. That's yeah. this. This fight's definitely one to take not to go the distance. Yeah, I agree completely. Bruno Silva is a murderer, and it's it can Gerald. I would Murchard. say that's like top two fights. Murchard's kind of on a skid too. Like he's not top I think two he won or his three. Last fight. He won his last fight. I think. Let me see. No, he lost his last fight. There's Jotko. He lost to Jotko by decision. If there were three fights on this card that I would... I'm not naming them, but if there were at least three fights on this card where you had to bet that aren't going the decision, I would say this mm-hmm. is probably number two. Maybe not, though, because he has three subs in last... He has three subs last year. He <clears throat> submitted Dustin Stolfutz in the third round, submitted uh, Mahmoud uh, Muradov in the second round, and submitted Bartos Fabinski in the first round. Well, so they're if they're getting finished. I know Stolfutz. I don't know the other guys. Me neither. Minus he's, minus four fifty for to not go the distance. Yeah, this ain't going the distance, brother. I'm probably gonna parlay that up. I think I already did parlay it up. I'm gonna have to relook. All right, but moving on, let's. Go, oh, let me go back to these fights. I think it's gonna be a good fight though. Bruno Silva is definitely somebody you got to keep your eyes on. Somebody else you got to keep your eyes on is Ariane Arian Lipsky. I think I parlayed her up too, but it's weird. My app isn't working. It's not showing who she's fighting. Uh, that was Pris- one of those moved up Priscilla. fights. Kachera? Nice. I Something love it, like Winston. That. I love it, Winston. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce her name. So Arion Lipsky actually came in overweight mm. this week. And I this think. is one of those or No, was fights. it last week? No, she was the one who came in overweight last week, yeah. and they pushed it a week. Okay. So she could make weight, and I think she made weight this time. I don't know. I have to look up into who made weight and who didn't. I don't think anybody missed weight um, in the UFC. We had Elimelay McFarlane uh, missing weight by three pounds, though. For Bellator. In, for Bellator. Apparently a whole fight got scrapped. Yep. One of the fighters was too overweight. Crazy. Overweightness. That's I mean, it, losing losing weight like that, it's just hard, bro. We don't know how it goes. <laughs> right? We I don't know how the sure. fuck that shit is. But uh, moving on, we got Devin Clark fighting Amazat Mirzaknovov. Wait. Amazat? Mur Zakhanov. There we go. Something to I did. Point. I did, but it was the second time. And Amza is undefeated. So we got Devin Clark fighting an undefeated fighter. Devin Clark at 13 and 6, fighting an 11 and 0 Amza. Ah. So it's hard to bet for Devin Clark in this one. So here's why. <laughs> That's who I was going to bet on. Here's really? why. <laughs> yeah. So, Dude, <laughs> you might want to rethink a little. He's facing a beast, but here's why I feel comfortable betting beast. on Devin Clark. The reason I would bet on He's Devin Clark. coming off of a knockout win. Did you know Devin Clark is, was the long standing um, training partner for John Jones? I did not know that. Yeah, he was his long-standing training know. partner. He was, um, but like when he fought Gus and all of those guys, that was his training partner. So like, does do training partners inherit the talent of their super talented counterparts? No. Not necessarily, or else Devin Clark would be a little bit more relevant. But that being said, I think he's got all the tools in his um, work belt for an upset. Not to say that I think he's the betting favorite. But I feel completely confident that he'll get any fight done. And if you look at him, just like look, everyone just Google a picture of Devin Clark. Look at this man's quads. He's huge, dude. Look at him. It's quads in, don't win fights, if, though. You know what I'm no, saying? No, obviously physiques don't win fights. But the reason I'm emphasizing that is like, how does he make 205 is really what I'm getting that at. That is a good question. This man is cut out of stone. He's I think huge. with Devin, though, dude, he's so wishy-washy. Like, when he fights the who's who's, he loses. Like, he That's got submitted fair. by Anthony Smith. He beat Alonzo Menafield. You know, that's awesome. Alonzo's cool. Yeah. Lost the decision to Kuti Lava, like, yeah. which is a decision that you could definitely win. And then knocked out William Knight. Who the fuck is William Knight? Like, <laughs> uh, it's just so hard to pick. It makes me so hard to pick him. Like, this is a it bias, makes me very scared for Devin Clark. I think they're just trying to feed Mirzakhanov because he just came off of a TKO win. But there's he's Triple. only had one fight in the UFC. No, no, he hasn't. Shia? Yeah, he's only had one fight in the UFC and then two canceled fights other than that. Um, in his one fight, he looked fucking like a monster. So, uh, But I can see Devin Clark winning this. Like, it, It's a toss-up. Like what's what? Devin Clark sitting at? Uh, plus 124. That's, uh, that's a toss-up. That's yeah. close. But like, that's what, close. what is um, Merzikhanov going to present to Devin Clark? Like, uh, granted, what you see in training and how it like shows up on game day, per se, is not that doesn't always work. But like, what his 
other than hitting him really hard successfully, which Devin Clark has eaten some punches in his recent fights, what else could he do? His path to victory is his path to victory in any given fight. I think Devin Clark's path to victory is kind of undecided. You know what I'm saying? It is undecided, but my he has more is, tools. He's more versatile. But he who's might have more tools. To he might be more versatile. But he has six people that figured him out before this. So that's fact. I think. You're right. I, I, I can't even dispute it's, that. <laughs> it's hard for me to put money on Devin Clark when we have a guy that has not lost. Well, how about this? I think this was when I was talking about earlier. And Devin betting Clark, fights that won't go the distance. It's not like Devin Clark has been fighting a lot, bro. He fought in April. This is my number one fight on the whole card, I would say, to bet that won't go the distance. I mean, April's not that far. In a parlay. Though. What? If you parlayed a fight not going the distance, I would put this Probably one. this one. This, this was my number one. one. I can see Devin Clark because I've seen Devin Clark go decisions though. Like I've seen. I don't him think this take it take it to a decision. I think undefeated Mirza Khanoff is going to come in come in hot. And ooh, check this out. Top story: Devin Clark's elevator run in with Amza Mirza Khanov. Let him know he wants to rip my head off. That's what Devin Clark said in his uh, most recent pre-fight interview. Like Mirza Khanov told him that he could tell by their elevator running that they had at the hotel that he wants to rip his head off. Oh. Like he wants to come he's for game. my head. He's Mirza. He's gonna go for the finish. That's what I'm assuming. Like Mirza, and you know what that tells me? Devin Clark's like, oh, you want to come for the finish? I'm gonna point fight your ass. I'm gonna wrestle your. Ass. I'm gonna wrestle your ass. I'm gonna take you down. So like, <clears throat> I don't know what's gonna happen. It's anybody's game. That it would be a good bet to put uh, to not go the. Di- what is it to not go the distance? What's the what's the line on that one? Um, I gotta. I bet it's like a minus two hundred. It is minus two ten. <whistles> nice. <laughs> I'm good. All right. <laughs> yeah, I kind of assumed that it was gonna be around there, just because like. I don't know, just like how the fu- how this is coming out, how it's you know mm-hmm. stirring. It's gonna be a good fight. I can't believe you're gonna put your money on Devin Clark though. I that was kind of scares me a just little. Just because he also has like two first names. So. <laughs> oh my god! Please stop Winston. with the two first name bets, dude. <laughs> you mascot, dude. It worked last time. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if it worked last time. It's gonna not work one you time. You guys kind of talked me out of it, so <laughs> I, I got a backup. Already. God damn it. After that fight, we got Yasmin Juragu, another undefeated fighter, fighting... Oh, this is... Oh, Yasmin. So it's a girl. My bad. I didn't even look at the pictures. <laughs> I was just so used to exotic names, bro. Like, I don't... <laughs> Yas... Yasmin. I didn't think it was going to be, you know. Yasmin Juragu versus Isman Lucindo. Um, I have no input on this fight. We have an undefeated fighter fighting at straw weight against a... Th- fighter that's 13 of four i mean i don't know anything about these fighters not really sure why they're on the main card my thing is why is could we have put angela hill on the uh main could we put a cynthia calvillo on the main why are these people on the main random i don't know i'm not the fucking fight booker maybe it'll be a really good fight it probably is these these women are probably beasts and we just know nothing about them (laughs) you know um, say, same with the next fight. Like, I know David Onama. I've seen him fight before. But Nate Landwer. It sounds very familiar, but I don't know who that is. I have no input on this last fight. Let's look into these guys, though, a little bit. Yeah, I'm looking up. Hasn't fought this year. Landwer hasn't fought this year at all. He's coming off a submission win versus Ludovic Klein. But he's also coming off of a knockout loss from Julian Irosa. In February last year, and where's fought in the UFC for a few years? He lost a decision to Elkins as well, and lost to Gilbert Burns' little brother Herbert Burns by TKO KO. Not looking hot for Mister Nate. Yeah. Not looking the hottest for Mister Nate. I probably would have put the money on Mister Nate. Let's see how David Onama's looking, huh? David Onama coming off a submission win versus Garrett Armfield. So his only fight in the UFC. Um, Nate, this is a hard bet. Nate is a striker, from what I'm reading, because according to this, he's a three-time M1 Global Champ, and he's 15 and four. This is a good fight to bet not to go the, not to go the distance. Another one, he, another one to not go the distance. These dudes look a lot. They, they don't look like they weigh only 145, and they're not oh, like they're, they're not they're not really weight. big. Like they're not huge, but I'm surprised this is the co-main again. I mean, yeah, we've had so many deep good cards that it's kind of hard to fill this card up. Oh yeah, like. We already have a Dominic Cruz versus Chito Vera, which is crazy. I don't really know how to break down this co-main. Like, I, my thing is Landwehr. I I will say that you were not going the distance this fight. Landwehr, 
has been finished a good t- amount of times. He has been to decision a few times. But Onama is getting finishes. This is his second time in the UFC. I guarantee he wants to make a statement. I think this is not going the distance. I don't know who's going to win. I, if I had to bet on someone, it would probably be Onama. I yeah. guarantee. What's Onama's? Or your bet's closed, huh? No, I got it. What's Onama's line right now? Minus 350. I mean, I didn't have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I kind of assumed. Just judging off of their last previous fights. Um, but let's just move on to this main event, dude. This is one to break down for sure. Marlon Chito Vera taking on Dominic Cruz. This is like a fight that we should have watched, I don't know, 10 years ago. Like, <laughs> this is crazy to kind of see two legends coming together. Dominic Cruz has been kind of on top of the uh, Bantamweight, dis- d- uh, the Bantamweight division for it a long his. time. It, it was his. his. It, it was, was the, it, for the longest time. He was the king. And Chito was on the bottom of that shit, and he climbed all the way up. Now they're fighting. So you know what's Chito insane? Chito is coming off of a hotter streak than Dominic, for sure. Dominic does not fight that often. Yeah, he beat why Pedro he's Munoz. The underdog. He beat Pedro Munoz, but got dropped twice in that fight. Yeah. So, Can Dominic get dropped in this fight, but recover? Will Cheeto? If Ch- I don't know, man. If Dominic gets dropped, I think Cheeto finishes. I don't know. Cheeto showed a lot of um, he like he didn't try to go for broke. You're right. You're right. He, he was really he reserved. His last fight, he was so reserved. I guarantee he's gonna do that with Dominic too. You're so right. You know what's crazy? I can see this going the distance easy. Cheeto Vera is only. 29 he looks so much older than he is everyone said that like we were watching i was watching that's um, crazy bro. big john mccarthy and um uh, stephen thompson were saying they're like oh he's 34 35 and then they looked it up nope he's 29 which when you think about the career he's already had it's entirely in the ufc <laughs> like he's another like max holloway in a way like he's he just the ufc like made him seven. who he is 19 and 7 i mean this is a fight that like for bias purposes, I don't. I wouldn't want to bet because I don't mm, like. I see you. As lame as this sounds, I would rather them to give us twenty five minutes of back and forth spectacular war and it go to a draw than see either of those two lose. My thing is the disrespect <laughs> on the lines, bro. They have Dominic as a plus two hundred. He's a former champion, a long reigning champion, mm-hmm. and he's at plus two hundred against someone who had to climb the ranks to be here. This is it's it's kind of it's disrespectful to me. So that's why I did I will state it here right now. I did pick up Dominic Cruz to win by decision, which is his which path is to a, victory. Which is his own I don't see Dominic knocking him out. I don't see Dominic subbing him. I see him winning a decisive decision. Yeah. Unless or a close he, decision. Unless and that's why I picked it up. It was a plus. I forgot what. Remember when Dominic came back, like his original comeback before plus 275. Before he got to fight Dillashaw to go take his title back, he fought um, I believe it was Tieki Matsugaki, and mm. he just destroyed him. Mm. That's the only fight in his career that I can vividly recall that he's ever done that. Yeah, it's been a long time since he's gotten a finish, and that was in like it's been a long time since he's fought, bro. He has when was the last time he fought? He fought Munoz last year, I believe. Last year, and then I think before that he lost to Triple C, and he that was his last fight. Munoz and Casey Kenny. He fought Casey. I don't even remember. He, that. he made a decision. Uh, Pedro Munoz, he beat a decision. Casey Kenny. And then before that, 2020, he lost to Triple C? He lost to Triple C by okay. KOTKO. Henry Cejudo is Triple C Winston. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think Dom gets the decision win just because I think he's the more technical fighter. He's been in five round wars. He's been in five round wars, but honestly, Cheeto is on such a hot streak now. And youth I can is see on Cheeto his side. I can see Cheeto finishing him. I the can. only finish is going to be via Cheeto. Yeah. In my yeah. opinion. Um, and honestly, I'm thinking about hedging Cheeto for a. Finish win, but what's the point? I don't know. It, maybe if the odds are right for it. This is a tough I picked up Dominic as a plus 275 by decision win. That is a great fucking payout. For him, yeah. For him? Like, I was like, wow. So I put so I put one unit on him, plus 275. Let's go over these bets, too. Um, or actually, no, let's break down. Let's break this down more. I, I really think Dominic can only get it done by how Dominic does. Mm-hmm. Footwork, pointing. Cheeto it has to rush him. Cheeto has to take him down he has to make this a dirty ass fight for him to win cheeto has to establish the jab because if if dom does what dom normally does and gets his footwork routine going he's just gonna frustrate cheeto but Uh, he frustrates everybody dom is slower now dom is a different so much slower and he hasn't fought this year yeah it's tough he hasn't it's what what, it's august man i don't consider this fight on like i think this fight is okay i'm okay with the matchmaking but i look at it kind of like y'all should have let like Dom is I, I they're giving like Dom it. a favor in my opinion. My, yeah, so that, I think Chicho has more to lose in this. But fight. that's why I like it. I like it because they're like, all right, Dom, you're a legend. 
keep him up. Let's see if you can keep up because that that's the real test. Like he, I mean, look at last his last year. He had a, he fought a Casey Kenny, he fought a Pedro Munoz. Mm-hmm. I feel like it kind of makes sense for Chito Vera, and it's a big feather in the cap for Chito Vera to take out Dominic Cruz, like the biggest. Yeah, like so. And the only this fight's only happening because every other person ahead of Chito is locked up. That yeah. whole division yeah. is I on mean, skates. Yeah. The whole division. The bantamweight is such a um, second to, busy. Second to lightweight, division. I think bantamweight might be the deepest. Yeah. In the whole um, bantamweight's UFC. crazy right now, dude. It's crazy. It's 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 crazy. Like with Sean O'Malley. I mean, all these guys, all these guys in, in the bantamweight division. It's it's been a since we've been watching fights. Bantamweight has been insane. It's been one of my favorite uh, divisions, hands down. A lot of these divisions that we've always referred to have typically had their their respective like best if you will and they've just kind of owned the division and like Mm -hmm. when we got the little divisions if you will or the lower weight divisions dom took like he went from wec to ufc champ right away they just kind of like absorbed those that way because those were new um belts to be had which was cool and then he just he owned that division for a hot minute and then after he owned the division we had the hen and brow and then after hen and brow we had dillashaw and then we had (laughs) pillashaw Because he used fucking Needle EPOH shot. or whatever. And then after him, um, Triple C. And then, like, after Triple C, Crazy. Piotr Jan. And Piotr there's, Jan didn't My thing it is, there's, there's weight divisions that have never had a double champ. Bantamweight is one of them that has. So, yeah. like, that says a lot about the division. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, they, there's a lot of greats there, man. There's a lot of greats there. I'm so glad that UFC absorbed WEC. W, okay, I've always like been strike four. Those are the, all the other those ones. are the two best absorptions in Zufa history. Those are the only competition that I think they, they pick, when they picked up Strike Force, they picked up DC, they picked they picked up so many good fighters. So many champions Force. to be from Strike Force. <laughs> Dude, Robbie Strikeforce. Lawler, fucking Tyron Woodley, the people they picked Daniel up from Cormier, there. Uberine. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it goes on. The list goes on. Strike Force was a force they had to buy Strike Force. Yeah. And then or else like, they'd still be relevant today. Like when they bought the WEC, you got Cowboy, you got Anthony Pettis, you crazy. got um, like uh, Benson Henderson. It's crazy to think about because those are all like UFC legends. Those right? were all champions, basically. Yeah. And like it's crazy to think about. Or like when Eddie Alvarez came over to the UFC, Bellator legend, Underground King, he became champion. Shout you know what I'm saying? Eddie. I'm not trying to paint a narrative or a picture that like there's all these unsung heroes outside the ufc it's just a, a lot division. of these a lot of these divisions have had like the light heavyweight division is the worst example of this you get like four or five like talented fighters who get to the top of that division who just won't lose to the like the one through five don't lose to 10 through six basically you need the jamal hills to come onto the scene that we've never heard of and then just start mm. wrecking fools because the five through whatever are going to like a terrence they're going to keep they're going to keep regurgitating or kamara usman is a victim of this because they can't get competition they're just too for him. good yeah he, they're just usman's so good he's beat everyone he's ever beat twice now basically you know what i'm saying like leon's about to be his like third second fight of his his title reign so it's like these it's it's so beautiful when we can get these like this new talent mm. you know what i'm saying and all that being said though wrapping it up sorry <laughs> no 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 it's good like it's just that was a good point to like kind of wrap up on like we have a fat bantamweight division we have a fat bantamweight division fight that's happening this weekend i mean when you guys are watching this tonight yeah Tonight is going to be the craziest uh, bantamweight. I, this is going to be one of the craziest bantamweight fights that we've seen in a while. I think. I mean, tec- technical wise, you know, f- UFC lover wise, like this isn't a casual fan fight because I mean, for the casual fan, do they even know these who these guys are? Um, but for a real UFC lover, fight MMA fighter. Uh, I mean, not MMA fighter lover, but MMA lover, MMA fan. This is a good fight. Um, and I'm excited. I don't know who's going to win, but let's go over these bets I took. So let's start with that main event one. I took Dominic Cruz to win by decision, plus 275. Now, the only reason I did that is because of the uh, money line. I mean, not the money line, the odds. The odds on it. It was a plus 275. It was a plus 200 for him to win. I, I took it as the only way, the only way Dominic's going to win. I don't think he's going to knock out Cheeto. I really don't. <laughs> I think he's going to do it by decision. I think that's the only way he's going to win. I think Cheeto, if it does get finished, Cheeto's got that finish in the bag. I agree. Because he's coming off of these wins. like He's, he's got some notable-ass wins, dude. Cheeto's fucking moving through. All right, moving on. I have a two-pick parlay at a minus 108. This is a for-sure one. I picked the over 2.5 with Cynthia Cavillo and Nina Nunez, and I took Bruno Silva to get the win against Gerald Merchart. So I got Bruno Silva, two, minus 285. The over 2.5 for minus 230. We parlayed that up for a minus 108, doubling the money up. 
Only bet one unit on that. Then we have another two-pick parlay. I picked up Yusuf Zalal to beat Damon uh, Blackshear, money line. And then I picked uh, Marlon Chito Vera and Dominic Cruz to do the over 2.5. I really don't think that finish is going to happen in the first three rounds. If that finish is happening, it's happening later. Because these are two veteran fighters that have done this before, who have gone through the battles. I don't think Dominic is going to take out Cheeto before the 2.5, and I I think Dominic is good enough to stay surviving past the 2.5. I don't think Cheeto is going to catch him with that shot before that. So that's why I parlayed that up. And Yusuf Zalal, it's kind of a – I picked him up at minus 125. It's kind of a pick em, but I think Yusuf Zalal has the more tools. Uh, he has the more tools to get it done, Damon Blackshear. I, I just I don't, it's it's kind of a it's a hard this this one's kind of a more risky parlay. It's a plus one thirty with both of those picks parlayed up. But Yusuf is the harder pick on that. I think the over two point five on that main event is kind of an easy bag, if you ask me. The Yusuf is a law pick is kind of a risky one though. Um I have a three pick parlay too. I, I parlayed up the over 2.5 of Marlo, uh, with Cheeto and Cruz again. I picked the over 1.5 with Cynthia Calvillo and Nina Nunez. That was a for sure one. Like That, that I think is going to happen for sure. And then I parlayed that up with o- Odd Osborne. Or uh, Odd Osborne. There we go. <laughs> Fuck that one up. <laughs> to not go the distance with Tyson Nam. That three-pick parlay to hit a plus 150. Then I actually... Um, actually followed the homies from MMA Hour. So they build their own parlays too. I actually hopped on their parlay this week. I kind of liked it. only did it for a few sprinkles though this time. They're at a plus 257. This is a more risky parlay. They picked up Lupita Godinez, money line. Ariana Lipsky, money line. The Marlon Chito Vera and Dominic Cruz to go over 2.5. And then Oda Osborne to win, money line. Which I would say the riskiest... Oh, this isn't very, very risky of a parlay, honestly, looking at it. Maybe maybe the Ode Osborne, because anything can happen. Or Otto, Ode, I don't know how his name I don't know his name, dude. Ode, Odd, whatever his name is. He's going to win. So, yeah, those are the parlays that I have set right now. Uh, moving on, I have Josh Quinlan to win by KOTKO. I picked that up at plus 100 as well. Um, and I did that one because it was kind of like a for sure. Because Josh Quinlan's coming off. So... Josh Quinlan, Quinlan is coming off of a good amount of knockouts. I think nine of his last 12 are by knockout in the first round. And he's actually going through a little bit of steroid trouble. He actually oh. got popped with steroids recently and it had his last fight canceled because of it. So I, I'm going to think the roids are flowing through and he's going to get that fucking KO win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And also the fighter he's fighting is... Uh, Jason Witt. No disrespect to Jason Witt, but he has been knocked out a few damn times. Damn. I think like... Six of his last seven have been by knockout, mm-hmm. of him getting knocked out. So, you know, I'm kind of going, I'm riding on that. So we're going to be riding on Josh Quinlan. Now it's that time. Let's build our parlay and get Winston out of here, huh? Because I know you have to be leaving real soon. Yeah, probably about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, so let's build this parlay, go over uh, any other bullshit we want to go over, and then we'll just go from there, brother. Sounds good. Where the good. fuck is Derek going? It's it's good. Oh, he's going to see his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Derek got his hyena in the back. Oh, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> Yo, all right. So we, let's build this. Build this parlay, boys. Let's let's think smart. Who should we pick? Who's going first? Who? What should we do? I'll go first. You want to go first? Because you said you already had your sure pick, right? I or did. I was gonna go with Devin Clark. Which guys. isn't. It's not a bad pick. It's a risky pick. Yeah. I mean, I felt better about Jeff Neal. So you did feel better about <laughs> Jeff yeah. Neal. I'm going with the good old Lapita. Oh. Team Loopy, yeah. he's riding yeah. Team Loopy, dude. Yeah. Yo, shout! That's a good pick. Yeah. That's a good pick. Because you guys thought Lupita was gonna win, but you guys really like Angela Hill. It sounds like so you weren't didn't want to pick. So I was like, okay, I don't give a fuck about Angelina. Hey, so, <laughs> Lupita sounds good. Ooh, yeah. dude, honestly, Winston might have the best pick on this parlay this week. I'm not even like because there are so many people betting on Loopy this week. Like they just they're they're on a Loopy high right now. Like yeah. it's Lupita. Godinez hour. And I went crazy <laughs> last week, so you know, I'll go a little conservative this week. You know. Yeah, I see you, I see you. Yeah, he's picking up the minus three twenty five Lupita Godinez. We're checking this out on DraftKings right now. Do you have any idea who you're picking up, Dave? Um what are you I, feeling? I was kind of leaning into like I'm probably there's do three fights again. that I think any of these three fights not going the distance, whichever you guys think, because I'm confident on all three. So mm. the Boudet versus Bretsky heavyweight ooh, bout ooh. or um Silva versus um Mearshart. Or mm. the um, the Clark versus um, 
Marzakhanov. One of those three fights, any of those three not going the distance, I would feel confident on. Mm. So whichever you feel comfortable parlaying. Go through them. No, you got to pick, dude. You got to pick one. We ain't picking um, for you. Mm, let's go with the Boudet versus Bretsky, I guess. Ooh, that okay, one might so have been one of the most. Um, Martin Boudet versus Lucas Bresky not going the not distance. going the distance. That is a minus two hundred. That's a good pick. Okay, cool. I was worried. <laughs> That's pretty good. Good pick. That's a pretty good pick. Yeah, it's not I didn't want to like. Yeah, not, I wanted to be risky, but I didn't. You're not be picking like, either of them. I didn't either. want to monkey wrench the parlay to where we had to like backtrack with a safer bet just to compensate. Yeah. yeah. And now let's go over their last. Um, I'm gonna pull up their last um, few fights because I want to see how many f- what their finish rates looking like. They're just so heavyweight, and I think heavyweight... Exactly, and that's kind of like... And so this is Martin Boudet's second fight in the UFC. He lost his first against Chris Barnett by mm. decision. Um, let's look up Lucas Bresky. This is going to be hard to spell. B-R-Z-E-S-K. Well, I got to do the first one first, dude. There. There we go. I got it. I got it. I like the little slash through the L. That shit looks <laughs> dope. All right. <clears throat> Oh, come on. I went on Sure Dog. I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like their site. I don't know why. We actually had a no. He 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 was involved with a no contest on Dana White Contender Series. Hmm. Last year, it was overturned. Hmm. Weird. Don't really want to get into it. Don't really care. Um, but he is going to be his first fight in the UFC. Um, he's coming off, before the uh, no contest, he's coming off of a TKO win and a unanimous decision win, a draw a TKO, and a submission, a TKO, but then, before that, he got TKO'd. So he's coming he goes off for of a... Yeah, exactly. So this might be, I mean... A 265 going for broke works. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, dude. This is a good pick. It's a good pick. I'm taking it. All right. So good. we got so we got Lupita Godinez, minus 325. And then we got a Martin Boudet versus Lucas Bresky, not going the distance at minus 200. Ooh. I kind of want to parlay up Josh Quinlan. But a Josh Quinlan, Jason Witt to not go the distance seems super tasty right now. And the reason being, the fight prop is a minus 190. That's pretty nice. That's a, that's nice for another heavyweight bout to not go the distance. Which I feel like is the safest Which division is, to do that. Exactly. Down the board. Mm-hmm. Probably the highest finish rate of and any my, division. And my lame ass definitely does not want to do the over 2.5 for the main event again. Because that's like in every one of my bets. Uh... Ariana Lipsky was, uh, would be a good bet, too, or Ariane, Ariane whatever her name is. Um, uh, I might, let's see what this Odd Osborne Tyson Nam prop is looking like. Let's see what this is sitting at. Minus 165 to not go the distance. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> dude, ZZ's trying to fuck with your puff code, dude. That's crazy. Back right. up, ZZ. Minus 165 to not go the distance, or should I do the 190? That's kind of, eh. Yeah, it's... Coin flip that one. My thing is, like, the... So, the, the that Connor Burst dude that I get a good amount of my bets from, he was saying how much money he's made off of flyweight under 2.5s. <laughs> he says he's just made so much money off of the under 2.5s for the uh, yeah, flyweights. Just move it. Just move your puff Let's go. See. Yeah, I would just get that shit out of the way. See, she's trying to get a good path. She wants the Q-tips. You know what, guys? I th- oh, fuck, this is kind of hard. You know what? I'm taking the Josh Quinlan, Jason Witt to not go the distance. Okay. I think it's our safest way to win. So what's our overall par- uh, parlay Let's bet Let's see what like? it is. Let's see what I'm it is. Curious. Let me hit this last one. We're at a plus 199. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. I'll take it. I'll take it. So we have a minus 325 Lupita Godinez. A minus 200 not go the distance between Martin Boudet and Bresky. And we have a minus 190 not go the distance between Jason Witt and Josh Quinlan. Nice. If you bet $5 on that bet, you will win 1496 Or if you bet whatever type of unit on that, you will triple it. Oh, yeah. So we are going to be taking that one for sure. That's a good bet to take. Um, uh, how, many, how much money are you just throwing sprinkles on it? What are you doing? Um, I'm just curious. Like how much I put on that bet? Yeah, I'm just curious. What so you're I actually made out. a different bet. Ooh. So are you going to do this parlay too, though? Uh, no. What? I did my own. Okay. Yeah. Well, well how are you going to pick our parlay and then not do it? Well, I picked Lupita. <laughs> I just made a different bet. I picked Loopy, Bruno, and Bruno's David. All money line. That's good, man. Well, yeah. For what? For what? 
Three bucks. I just put three bucks. No, but like, what's the plus what? Oh, plus uh, one fourteen. Ah, uh, that's a little safer. Yeah. How are you not gonna take the bet that we just fucking made on our fucking show? Uh, it's just a lot. I Why would go. you admit that? At I least gotta, say you're doing it. I'm definitely doing it. I'm putting. I'm putting the house on this shit. Yeah, you fucking god. This guy is something else. I swear to God. The house is on it, dude. We're gonna. That's like saying we're not gonna hit. You don't think we're gonna hit? No, I. I didn't make it last week either. Yeah, you did. Uh. Uh-uh. He yeah. just participated. Oh, you didn't? No. What? I only did it the first week. Why? I don't know. I thought you believed in Jeff Neal. I did. Not enough to bet. <laughs> <better. laughs> is this you fair weather betting ass <laughs> yeah player. this I, motherfucker is something else i won dude. ricky like 10 bucks i don't hear shit dude this guy is something else <laughs> i swear to god bro what are you doing loopy's, really loopy's a safe bet <sighs> so when you bet at home do you have just like a dartboard with every represented mascot thing of is, the sport you're betting on and then no. you just i only bet out things wherever it lands that's where you bet no my thing is bet on mma the only parlay he hopped on for our show was the losing one. We've won every one since, and you're not going to even hop on? You're crazy, Winston. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hopped on the, <laughs> hopped on the oh, losing oh. one, and I was like, yeah, the same for me. And <laughs> I hopped off. No, I'm just kidding. You're crazy, this dude. Man. You're missing out on all these winnings, dude. No, yeah, it's, it's no big deal. I'm not worried about you're it. You're crazy. I made a different bet. It's probably, like, it's probably not going to hit because I don't know what I'm doing. No, nah, I mean you have a good you have good picks. Loopy, Bruno, and then who? Um, I don't remember. Onama, David Onama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's pretty good. That's, I mean, but it's I'd, not it's not bad. I mean, you did a favorite. You did a favorites parlay. Yeah, like, exactly. They're all favorites. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, so did we. We made an all favorites parlay. Mine is the closest to not being a favorite, though. Yeah. I don't know. I'm betting it. You guys are fucking assholes. So you're not betting it either? What the fuck? I don't. I've <laughs> announced I'm not on the only pod. one. I've announced many times on the pod that I don't bet because I'm superstitious. What? But hold on, though. I'm going to announce my first bet that I'm going to make once they finalize the bout agreement. Well, can you guys, like, maybe lie next episode and say we're betting? I'd fucking put mine in. You guys are fuck. Mm. You guys are something else. All right, so you made our goddamn parlay. I guess it doesn't matter. Well. Because you fucks already said you guys don't do it. It does matter. Why'd you guys admit that on pod? We've done the last I've, two. I've said many pods that I don't bet because I'm superstitious. That is it's true. okay. It's I okay. have clarified. But. When um, they, I don't even care because I'm making money. When Michael Chandler fights Dustin Poitier, I'm betting on that fight. Oh, you're fucking. This guy is something else. That <laughs> fight not going the distance is a guaranteed win. Oh yeah, uh, it is a guaranteed. That's a that's a that's obviously going to be a minus six hundred money line too. That one's going to be guaranteed. Yeah. So not to foreshadow into that too much. I kind of want to bet with Bruno Silva. I thought I had a bet with him, but I don't. I wish I did. I have too many bets though. All right. Do you have anything else sports news wise to I talk have, about? Because we have sports coming up. I mean, maybe we should talk two. about our fantasy shit. I Go got ahead. two. And you, you both, hit it, let's th- hit these first. They're both we'll adjacent, so I can knock them out back to back. Knock um, it. First one, and this is something I've talked about off pod a t- tiny bit. So, like, uh, Chris Cyborg just announced that she's going to make her professional boxing debut September 25th. Oh, I seen that. Against Simone, against Simone Silva, who I've never heard of. 17 and 21 in boxing. Damn. Well, and it's also the fight promotion is called um, it's called Fight Music Show. So it's gonna have boxing, MMA, and music like live performing. It's God it's taking it. place in Brazil. <sighs> I'm I mean, I seen her sign this contract live on Ariel Hawani's. I was kind of hyped for it at the time, but I didn't know all this bullshit was involved yeah. in it. Like, and as they were doing the interview, I was like, this is kind of weird. And then I looked up the chick's record, and I was like, what? Yeah. So that's, 17 that's, and 21. That's right around the corner. They're in, check it out. It's eight two minute rounds in. Cyborg's going to kill her. In eight ounce gloves. So that's like half size boxing gloves. A cyborg's not 16. M- murder her. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty confident. I wonder what that. the. Whoa. I wonder what the line on that is. Do you know when it is? September 25th. So that's close. Oh. I wonder if the like lines next are month. open for that. Probably not. Um, I guarantee we're not going to be able to find lines on that. So um, the segue off of that that's adjacent to that is. um. Don Davis, who is the co-owner of PFL MMA, um, he tweeted on the 10th, his tweet reads, Fans want the fight. Fighters want the fight. I have watched and listened that PFL MMA will provide all the money and handle all matters. Kayla Harrison versus Chris Cyborg. A million to each fighter. Two million dollar winner bonus. Pay-per-view super fight. No more talk. Decide the best inside the cage. So I think they should do it. They should have done it already. Well, the, he chose the 
it's either he thought that seeing Cyborg do the boxing match meant like, oh, cool, I can, like, this is fair game now. Like, Bellator sounds like they're going to flirt with co-promotions again, which they do. Scott Coker, shout out Scott Coker. He's the man when it comes to that. He lets his fighters go fight I, in, like, Dream and other shit. It's not a good fight to make for Cyborg. It's not. It's no, not. Kayla Harrison's going to, shy not. of getting She's knocked out. going to take out. her down, bro. Yeah. And the thing is, is I don't think that this is going to happen because there's, I, I want to see it. I Cyborg sh- has to land the shot. I want to see this so bad because, like, if you watch on, um... Big John McCarthy's podcast with uh, Stephen Thompson, he was saying that uh, the like it would be great if MMA did like the equivalent of like a World Games or whatever. Like the reason that promotions will never do this is because they don't want their their staple to risk losing to someone that they can't go turn the because like that will hurt the marketability. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Prime Connor went up against Eddie Alvarez, represented by Bellator at the time, and, weird. And Prime Connor <laughs> would have lost rather than the way he oh beat him. Oh my god! Imagine if that happened. It Imagine if different. they made that. They made that fight. They said, "All right, Eddie Alvarez." Versus Conor McGregor, co-promotion madness, crazy. Eddie Alvarez just knocks him out and just ruins the whole legacy. It never happens. And it, UFC, what would you? Oh, so like the reason that, that that'd be crazy. that's why we don't see these, and that's the same reason you don't see this in boxing. That was when Eddie was good. Mm-hmm. That's when Eddie was prime Eddie in so, Bellator. So the reason I, I, I mention it though is because about that. We don't see this, and like again, no. No promotion's going to be game. Like, there's some promotions who will do, like, they're like, all right, we're going to send some goons. Like, I'm going to send my, like, eighth and ninth ranked fighters to this promotion or co-promotion, whatever, because I want to prove a point that my eighth and ninth ranked fighters are better than your best, assuming, you know Mm. what I mean? Like a bluff, if you will. And if if they lose, then you could be like, well, they were eighth and ninth. Mm -hmm. I didn't send the cream of the crop. I thought your cream of the crop was cut from a, a lazier cloth, so to speak. My thing is the only cream of the crop that we've sent away that we've exported is Demetrius Johnson. Everybody else that we've kind of like, bye bye. Like, I'm glad like, we did that, but in everyone the- else is not like, a- like Anthony um, Pettis. Uh huh. He's like th- one in three right now. Ooh, I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned Anthony Pettis. Eddie so, like, Alvarez got his ass kicked in one. So like, uh, yeah. Anthony Pettis just it's lost. Crazy to kind of see. He just lost to Stevie Ray for the second time in PFL decisively. And not only that, he broke both of his hands. And ah, fight. and that I forgot. That's what, that kind of like you can't. That, it's hard. You're to, not going to win a fight with two broken hands. And he he broke his hands in that fight. I think his two hurt. fights ago he or or a fight ago he had that like displaced rib from the body lock. Like, but the thing is, can't a, catch a break. He can't catch a break, but he's catching the bag. They're giving him six hundred. He's catching the bag, and my thing is like k a fight. This is against Stevie Ray too. Like this is a common denominator. Like did you beat him twice? Stevie Ray beat the shit out of him <laughs> yeah, twice. Stevie Ray. I can see Stevie Ray taking the mill. Oh, yeah. yeah he can win that tournament easy. I don't even know who the rest is in it because I'm not into PFL that much. I don't bet that much on PFL. It's hard to understand and keep up because it's like... It's hard. Like, it's like... You can go undefeated and not win the tournament. It's like us trying to watch NFL and XFL and bet on both. And like, mm. Speaking of football, though, we should tone off the fighting talk and maybe talk about that a little bit because we're, we're getting our shit ramped up. Um... I was talking to you guys how I uh, set up our family, my family uh, fantasy league. Well, let's set up a sport champs one, dude. Yeah. Uh, we kind of mentioned it at the beginning, you know. I'm not but commissioner. I will not be commissioner. I think I'll just make it, and I'm just <laughs> going to leave everything like ESPN, default, PPR league, yeah. fucking setting yeah. bullshit. The only thing you might have just to change. It, just you... so we can kind of go off of other people's shit, too, so we can, like, um, you know. Do a snake draft. I don't know if that's, that's automatic. Yeah, so I, yeah, it's the top selection of the four types of drafts. All right, cool. And I did snake through my family one, so I'm gonna, I plan on doing snake through the sport champs one cool. so i mean we for sure have us three i know yeah. that yeah and you i can i fun? have we have so many friends we have so many you know friends. we're be, gonna figure it out we should do some like i, I understand we're not gonna bet money on this it's kind of a bragging rights league but if we could incorporate some type of like it's not even just a bragging rights league let's it's do a like content a, league let's like, do like we're, a, this is we're talking content we're gonna talk about games we lost who's winning we who's, gotta come up with a last place punishment Oh, yeah. Which we can do on that pod. we can do we on can pod. Discuss. Yeah. And then, yes! I mean, everyone would have to be down, though. It's not going to be egregious. It might be like you have to sit through an entire pod, assuming you're someone who sits through the pod. Or, or yeah, you have like to sit in the pod. Says, then, like, I fucking yeah, lost. Yeah, you have to sit in the yeah. pod, and we get to, like, make fun of you or something. Put you in a yeah, dunce cap yeah, in the back where you're not even participating. You're just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, it's just <laughs> us, and they're just sitting in the corner, and we're like, huh, loser. You get to fetch beer for, like, the whole pod. <laughs> something like that, you know what I'm Something saying? that's not too demoralizing. Gotcha. But, but yeah, that, that makes it fun. We'll do something like that. Because I remember our Schket League, mm-hmm. Schketty League, we did um, Loser pepper. had to eat the hottest pepper that we could find. So the funny part about that is it... And we only did it once because... No one was down. <laughs> no yeah. one was down after but the first year. We have footy of us electively just uh, trying the pepper. When I say trying, yeah. like we take the pepper and we broke <laughs> off like, like a piece of 
maybe like a crushed red pepper equivalent size bite. It's fucked up. And we were panting. It they was were chocolate habaneros. Yeah. Remember that Cody just... It got the worst Cody, of Cody. Cody, yeah. It gets Cody the worst of our buddy. Shout out. Cody should be in it this year. We should definitely ask Cody to be in this one, You too. can ask. I bet. Because I know Shket, he's in Shket. He's in Shket. He's in another league with um, some of his oh, buddies. Oh, he's in another one. So, so I don't okay. know if he's down for that. I many. only plan on doing three leagues. I have to do this league, my family league, and then my cousin's league. So I'm in. I'm doing three. That's I'm lot. in the Shket league for sure. I'm in this league. And then um, one of my coworkers has like a $100 yeah, see, league. Fuck, fuck, Dave. We're doing leagues. How about I only, you? I only have one, and that's the. Show. Oh, Vincent's gonna win! No. Yeah. And Shket and. Well, yeah, I'm in. Shket. Okay, so the two. All right. Well, counting this one would be yeah, two. Would be two. Okay. All right. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better because if Winston could just focus on one league while we're focusing on three leagues, Winston at once. wins the most games and never wins ships. He's oh, tied. Oh, I'm not hating this man. No, I was kind of hating. Well, if you yeah. go to our Shket <laughs> league history, he's tied for the most wins in league history, but. He's never participated. No in one's ever going to beat my comeback so streak. It's ever. okay. Shout out, ever. shout out, um, Winston. Shout out, Josh. Josh, y'all will see him eventually. Josh, we gotta get Josh on. Both of them are tied for the most wins in our. Josh league is going to. We'll probably get Josh in this one too. Oh, Fuck, yeah. if he's gonna down, because he's, he's gonna got he's gonna be, be in a few. Too. He's got like three going. Oh so, shit. Okay, maybe with not. respect maybe to not. him. But yeah. that being said, like Winston and Josh tied for the most wins, but the guy who has the second most, technically the third because third team per se, but. They're tied for first. So, who has the second most wins and a championship? It's me. Yeah. I rode off in the sunset. All the dude. other, all the yeah, other yeah. ones. Are like, <laughs> I like, rode off in the sunset. Dude. All our hey, other Manning champs are here. like you, basically. Like, well, um, no, no one will ever beat that. No one. I literally was one in six. We've had some really interesting narratives Went in our league. into the playoffs, dude. Two and six. And then the second year, Cody won. Fucking wild and that. AJ day. almost yeah. won. AJ it's almost crazy. won that one year off of his like he lost his login info on his phone because he got a new phone in his auto draft team or I don't know if they're auto draft but he had like Christian McCaffrey and like a bunch of fire players. He so couldn't even adjust. He his went roster 11, He went like eleven and one. In. It still went. This in. man went eleven and one and didn't make one roster adjustment. Didn't take nobody out. That's like, hard to do. That's it was crazy. an accident. That's like, can, that's insane, isn't it? It's so just, pissed. <laughs> Everyone was so upset, bro. We even had, we're all try. We're all looking shit up every week. <laughs> we're like, hey, he's just we threatened chilling. them, dude. We were like, if you don't make an adjustment on your team, we're like, freezing it. <laughs> it was like, like anyone could have, like we could have not had anyone representing that team, and that could have been a phantom auto drafted team, and that team would Fire. still have been in our championship. Yo, dra- yo, draft better guys. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's crazy. Yeah, but I, I'm still gonna say no one will ever that I know will beat my fucking. Streak, dude. I was one and six. Went two and six. Went to the playoffs. Didn't lose a game. Won the Super Bowl seven and six. Yeah, crazy. yeah. I was seven. Crazy. And six that year. That, yeah. I don't know. And Josh was twelve and one. We had like five <laughs> people that were twelve or seven, seven and six second, that year. Second through like it was a place in a ten man league, basically. And yeah. Josh was like, I got this in the bag, easy. Tw-. He's all twelve and one. Hadn't lost a game in the fucking. All his players got sad season. later in the season. And then later in the season, those teams I told were making him, the dude, playoffs. So. I told him I was like, bruh, I don't give a fuck if I have Jameis Winston as my quarterback. Watch him throw all over you guys. Dropped forty points on the last game. Yeah. Okay. I need to get a Winston jersey. You that do. would be fire Dude. to get a Winston jersey, yeah. Oh, that would be so fire. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. I thought about it like last week. That would be a good fucking jersey to get. Oh, yeah. Especially like maybe an old school one. Yeah, like a Tampa Bay like one. Like a Tampa Bay Winston the, jersey. The Saints jerseys are a lot doper than the They are gas. <laughs> that, that Saints Winston jersey is going to yeah. be sick. Yeah. And it's going to be cheaper like because Jameis Winston. Like, it's he's, not still be, he's still with the, the he, Saints. He still is, but like he's not a Tom Brady. You yeah, know what I mean? Like he's true. not. Like you should be. I mean, I don't know. I don't Get know. Get a Seminoles Winston jersey. That they don't make fire. those anymore, so that's going to be That expensive. would be fire. Yeah. That would be cool. Shout out Jameis Winston for winning me that fucking shit. Yeah. Playing with that quarterback on your fantasy league is a roller coaster. So you're yeah, not bad. <laughs> um, yeah. You could you could have a 50 point week and then next week like a he's negative sitting five. after four fucking Dude. interceptions. You're like, "What the fuck?" I won the scoring title in Shkett this past season and I had Kyler Murray two years in a row because he's so mobile. That's a good pickup. He barely played, so like my backup was like Ryan Tannehill for a uh, large portion of Tannehill the season. Tannehill was a good pickup too. He's okay. He has games. He did great last he year. He has 300 yard games and he has like four sack games. There's no in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. But I see you. That being said, like he what, does have some bad games. What you're carried right, me right. this whole past season, probably other than I, I got a good like every year my running backs that I draft in the first round always get hurt or I trade them or I just some weird malarkey some takes place happens. to where it's like I just wasted my first draft pick. But this year I had um I had Cook, Devin Cook or Dalvin Cook, he was good. 
when he wasn't he's, hurt. I was going to say when but, he wasn't um, hurt. I got, like, when I got Debo Samuels, he was, like, one of the highest scorers in fantasy this year. I made a big mistake by fucking dropping Debo last, so, last year. So I had Debo Samuels. He did a lot of work for me. I had Damian Harris, the running back for the New England Patriots, who was sitting on Steve's bench. So I just offered him, like, a wide receiver. Like, I can't even remember who it was. It wasn't quite, like, a swindle, but... It was someone that he wasn't playing for, for someone I wasn't playing, mm-hmm. for someone I would play. And then he went off. Um, David Montgomery, running back for Chicago, he's been a sleeper two years in a row. That dude's a little juggernaut. Went off that, the reason year. I picked him is because that offense hasn't quite had a good um, quarterback in a minute between Mitchell Trubisky and, like, Nick Foles. So offenses that can't throw will run the ball. Facts. Will they score? Will they get in the red zone? That is to be determined. So that's mm-hmm. the risk you play. But is that dude going to get touches? Absolutely. So... That's that's some of the strategy I employ. That being that, also not trying to give away too many secrets, but backup running backs is the wave. Like it is the, um, every running Latavius back. Latavius Murray, Latavius Murray. Uh, who's the backup I had, for? I had Rashad Penny. Who was the, the backup that he for Dalvin Cook? For Dalvin Cook, uh, uh, Madison. Madison. Yeah. Madison. He's a beast. one of the best backup picks yeah. that you could ever pick. He's up. gonna Tony get hurt. Tony he's Pollard. Got, Dalvin's gonna get hurt every he's year. Gonna get hurt. Tony Pollard, the backup for Zeke, always plays and Tony always has Pollard's a twenty-point a good game. Pickup. He always does. He's a great backup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love what are you it. Doing? So I love it. There's so much to it, but like I'm nervous this year because I feel like there's the it's position. It's gonna be a crazy. The year. dynamic's gonna change, but some of the positional drop off is so noticeable. Like, like is is Russ gonna be a, a viable fantasy player again? He should be. Denver? Because I think he is, but but anything can happen. He's a top yeah, ten quarterback true. for sure, just as is. So I want, it makes me want to pick him up, but it makes me kind of scared too because he's th- some of the best fantasy value of any yeah. quarterback that you can get. But you got to think about old now. who's in your league. Is there Bronco right? fans? Because they're going to be like, oh, I got to get Russ because he's a Bronco. And and then, uh, let their and that, and that gives you gumption to pick up a Tom but Brady. Let, exactly. Uh, exactly. I exactly. love when people's bias bleeds into fantasy because it is, like, it's I mean, the everyone, best. It's everyone the best. has bias, but when their bias bleeds into fantasy, I like to allow them to make picks that are more like me with my fight picks. Mm. It's more wishful than practical. Like yeah. there's a lot of like, especially playing against Broncos fans. There's a lot of Raiders on that fucking yeah. fantasy roster that are tasty mm. to get on your fucking. La- so last year I don't want to maybe not off. Derek Carr, but I drafted Jamar Chase. Fire! Oh, bro. that's a good draft. Winston. Picture. That's another one. So, so like Joe Burrow. Yeah. Chase, like There's even like, even even Joe Mixon last year. Jamar was Chase like, Joe was Mixon, a rookie, though. Yeah. He so, was a rookie last so year. That's I a great him up pickup. On a, on a whim. After Jefferson, now everybody knows about him yeah, this year. That paid mm-hmm. off. After Justin Jefferson came, or came onto the scene, anything's possible for these rookie Jefferson wide receivers. Jefferson was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. he Jefferson's the, not doing the, anything in, in, in now though. Jefferson's he's, a beast. He's good. Yeah, he's, he's I would say. I would say. Like he didn't do shit last year. No, he did. Get over that. I must be yards. thinking. I'm thinking of someone else. Minnesota. Justin Jackson. I, I fucked that up with Justin Jackson. Minnesota is just not very good, so we don't really hear about it. I, I was thinking of Justin. The Jackson. The problem in Minnesota is um, their quarterback Kirk Cousins. His ceiling is like 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns, which is a great season. Mm. Yeah. But it's not the most wide receiver friendly quarterback. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So be on the lookout for our fantasy. Uh, we're gonna be talking fantasy football. We're gonna be talking. I mean, we're not gonna really do fantasy basketball and stuff, but no, we'll talk no. about basketball That's and too stuff. Tough. But should we get you out of here, Winston? It's 5.30. Yeah. Let's uh, get out of here. So, Do you want to talk about any basketball news at all before um, you do? So Fernando Tatis just got suspended 80 games in baseball for PED. Oh. So that's pretty big news. He just Who, got suspended what, 80 games. What He's a uh, he? shortstop for the San, uh, San Diego San Padres. Oh. Yeah, so that's the good Padres for the Padres just signed somebody big, too. I think um, they just they just picked somebody big up. Yeah, I think they just traded for. Uh, they gave Soto. somebody a max deal. They gave someone a fat max deal. Because... I mean, they just signed uh, Tatis to like a three hundred forty million dollar fourteen season contract. Oh, so it was that one? That yeah. was the one, and was, he's the one who. Got, oh, this is the second shit. season. He got, I mean, eighty games. Uh, it's like one hundred and sixty games. Something a, like that. That's, that's still a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, that's good for the Rockies. Um, and then it is. Um, Tom Brady is sitting out the rest of preseason for personal reasons. Hmm. Um, not really sure what's going on there. That's good to know. When you're the GOAT, you can sit out of practice. Yeah. I but, mean, but it's still not good. I mean, his two, well, I don't think two, I, but his starting center just got Ryan injured. Jensen. Ryan Jensen. CSUP Shout alumni. Out. No. He got injured for the year, Tore ACL. For the year? Yeah, yeah. he's out for Fuck. the year. And he's yeah. top five center in the God league. God damn yeah. it. He so, was the highest paid center when he got And he went to our contract. school. Yep. CSUP. God damn it, dude. He's one of two. 
CHP Shout out alumni. the Thunderwolves. Shout out the Thunderwolves. Let's go. He's yeah. one of two with the with the ship in the NFL from CSUP. <sighs> yep. Fuck. I'm like, damn. Vanilla. That makes yeah, me sad that he's big hurt. Mike. Yeah. He'll be back. I mean, he'll be back. But it's just lineman. for the full year. It sucks. Yeah. In the advancement in science, he <laughs> respectively damn. will. He could. It's unlikely, but he could make if the team makes a deep run in the playoffs. He could be back. Uh, so you're right. That's as a quarterback. That's your right hand. It depends so. on the severity and his recovery window, and if he has any setbacks. As like, a quarterback, he's, he's old. As a quarterback, True. that is so hard to do. That's with a good though. point. I'm I'm referencing in my mind, um, Jamison Williams, the recent draft pick from Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He tore his ACL, and they like he's going to be cleared. They said nine months from it happening in the natty, yeah. he should be at. Like in practice. Yeah, nine months you're good, but it just happened in August and February. Oh, yes. I did, I, for, for some reason, my mind remembered it being even sooner than that. Oh, yeah. It just so happened. he's gone. He's, he's gone. gone. Yeah. yeah. Damn, well, bro. The, well, shout out what, Ryan Jensen. I wonder what that's going to do to the to the Buccaneers then. That's big. That's that's big. That's your right hand your man long snap, out. the guy who blocks for you, you know what I'm saying? That's your yeah. man. That's, that's your man. Yeah. Like, he's one of the biggest blockers. <gasps> Like defensive ends go through him. That might have depleted Brady's uh, fantasy value a little bit. A little Not bit. gonna lie. But I mean, I've learned one thing. A little bit. Don't bet against Tom Brady. Fuck no. one, Never. one thing I've learned in the last <laughs> twenty <laughs> fucking years. He's been Ever. in the league. Never. Don't bet against him. So if you can pick him up, pick him up. He's the only dude that I am instantly shook if he's playing Mahomes in the postseason. He did great in fantasy because he's the only dude too. who's undefeated against Mahomes in the postseason. Didn't he finish like top ten? Fantasy he was the number one. Uh, he threw the most top yards five, last year. Maybe he huh? threw for like. He threw the highest yards he's ever In 16 thrown. games before he played the 17th game, he had like 4,900 yards and like 40 touchdowns. It they was the best picked, season statistically They just his picked career. up a uh, good wide receiver too, didn't they? Jerry Jones. They just picked up Jerry Jones too. Uh, Tom Brady. Not did, Jerry Jones. Uh, um, not Julio. Jerry Jones. Julio, uh, Julio, Julio Jones. Jones. Thank you. Jerry, uh, the owner. <laughs> the owner of Dallas. <laughs> he's all hot. He's like, hit me. <laughs> I'm open. Hit them, boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're definitely not playing against the Cowboys right now. He's all getting a massage. He's all getting a massage in the back. Oh, God fuck. damn it. Yeah, Julio Jones. That's still something to know. I yeah. mean, that's a, that's a potent... Center down Julio Jones. Hmm. Without Tom Brady, that was a potent offense before. It was. Like, the year before he got there, They're they went, like... Even they were 7-9, and nine and um, Winston threw, like, 30 touchdowns and 5,000 yards. He broke the record for most touchdowns, or interceptions in a season. Yeah, it was, he went, like, 30-30 and 30 with, like, yeah. 5,000 yards. But point being, that's... Like, obviously, a lot of that's to blame on him, but that offense was definitely cooking. A lot of garbage time, but still cooking. They still yeah, have a good sure. defense, too. Their defense is still good this year. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're, they're they, good. They didn't lose, like, They're one of the favorites in the <clears throat> NFC, I would say, in the playoffs. The only other good one pick up. above them. Good defense pickup Probably right the Rams. I, yeah. I don't the know Rams any other teams in the NFC. One. Oh, Easy. yeah. They're the number Easy ones number to one. repeat, for sure. Yeah. They're probably. Crazy. I don't think they're the favorite. I think they actually are probably the favorites. The favorites? Um, I uh, wouldn't Josh Allen and company, I thought. The Bills. I thought they were the number one. They're definitely the number one AFC for sure. Yeah, they're the number one AFC. You know who ESPN has at number two? Uh, probably Chiefs. I which I hate this fool. <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with. I, you don't agree with it? Why? I mean, I we just, lost Tyreek. Ah, uh, yeah, you. yeah, you did lose Tyreek. That's a fat weapon. That it's the best. Uh, he's the best uh, wide receiver in Kansas Where's City he history. Now? He went My, to Miami. Oh, he's in the Dolphins. Damn. So actually, to win the Super Bowl. Bills plus six fifty, Bucca- Buccaneers plus seven fifty, Chiefs plus one thousand, Rams. So we're third. Yeah, Rams. That's a good pickup. Plus one eleven. Thank so you. Rams are the fourth, fourth Whoa. most likely to win the Super Bowl, which is pretty crazy. I could see the Bills taking that. Yeah, I mean the Bills are the Bills got be better on both sides year. of the field. If you ask me, they'll be fire this or year, or at least for sure on Fuck. defense. Yeah, the they got better on defense. Von Miller. Yeah, well, yeah. and their star cornerback last year was out the full year, Tredavious White. Oh, fuck. He's so he's back. Yep. The Buffs are going to fucking murder. Yeah, the but murder. they lost Cole Beasley, and then they Ooh. lost, which is wide receiver, and then they also lost. Oh, well, I know Cole. Um, they lost Emmanuel Sanders, which Ooh. he was old. But they got I mean, Gabriel Davis. That dude got it, like did Emmanuel retire? Four touchdowns. No, I think he's a free Somewhere agent. Free I think. Agent. Oh. I mean, Sanders. But they got the old Sanders. They got yeah. weapons. They, they weapons. have weapons. Dude. I would say that Josh Allen is a big enough weapon to have by yourself. Well, yeah. Josh Allen is, is the weapon. He's yeah. the he's the the franchise, if you will. And then behind him, you got Stephon Diggs, top five. If you I'm ask definitely me. grabbing Josh have, Allen in my family league. They got my Dal- family's gonna die. Dawson. Knox. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking bro. Dawson Knox is one of the like four or five tight ends before you hit the tight end like just drop off. It goes yeah. from like, hey, they're gonna get you five. Or it's like Travis Kelsey, maybe ten points. Kittle, <sighs> maybe ten points. Um, I can't wait to pick the up the dude in Baltimore. I can't remember his name right now. Um, he's good Mark for Andrews. yeah, Mark Andrews. He's good for maybe ten points, and then like Dawson Knox is good for like eight points mm-hmm. any given week. Darren Waller is good for like eight points any given week. After that, 
kettle. Who fucking knows? <laughs> right? Ugh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Any any more uh, news before we get you out of here, bro? Cause no, that's it. That's it? That's yep. it? All right, man. I mean, I feel like that's been a pretty good one. How long have we been going, Winston? Can you see it over there? Uh, I cannot see it. No. I'll, I'll go ahead. Just so you don't have to fucking... Yeah, bro. That's good. That went way longer than I thought it would. We're at almost two hours. Oh, shit. It's nice. pretty fucking good. Oh, yeah. But honestly, I think we had a long start, so this is probably around like a minute. Yeah. Uh, an hour, like 40. Something like True. that. But all right, man. You guys have uh, watched Sport Champs with us. If you guys... I should probably grab these. It feels weird not hearing yourself after hearing yourself the whole time. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed the episode, do not forget to like and subscribe right here. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers, man. Street Champs is so fucking close. We just need 90 people to get us there to that 1,000 subscriber mark. So if you guys watched all the way through, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you. We're on the slow build up. Um, be back next week. Let me know how your bets are going. Let's hopefully hit these bets this week. Let's hope for some good fights. And uh, let's look forward to these next pay-per-views coming up, because I know we have one coming up soon. I think 277 is coming up soon, isn't it? Something's coming Some, up soon. Something's coming up. And but we yo, will talk about it. We will talk about it. My name's Rick G. Don't forget to check out all the new music that I'm going to be dropping. Check out all the music that is already dropped. Check out Maleficent, my Halsey cover, all of that stuff. Uh, be on the lookout for the new concert. Be on the lookout for the live show that we're going to be doing in October. Um, yeah, just hit the links below, guys. Um, and don't forget, if you guys like the Sports Champs podcast, do not forget to hit a like and share it to your friends. Hit it, Dave. Let's get the f- <laughs> out of here. Your, um, catch me at David Meets World underscore on Instagram. And uh, tune in to the regular Street Champ show, the Still Spicy, the Fuck It, We're Live. Um, all, I'm probably neglecting a bunch of the podcasts. Just you already know. Tune into the network. Yes, let's go. Subscribe. Share this. What if you could just do me one favor? Send your like dearest loved one a text message of one of our videos. No context. They're gonna have to click it, and then Woo. hopefully we get a view and a subscribe out of that. I dig it. I dig <laughs> it. Thank you guys. We appreciate you so much. Have a good night and enjoy the fights. Yep.